they are jumping into the game I'm here. I'm excited for this one. Oh, yeah. The run that we didn't mention it, but the run that Viper is going to have to make if oh, he yeah. wants to make the finals, he has to get uh, through how he's been feeling lately, right? Which is step number one. He did yep. that against Winchester. Yep. And then he has to beat Valesa, who he got swept by. And then if he goes past him, he has to beat Leary, who he got swept by. And then there's a high probability he has to beat Hera in the finals if he wants to win, who he got swept by. It's the revenge arc for Viper. Mm -hmm. And I think for Valesa, he's got something to prove here that it's not just a fluke when he comes out and beats Viper, right? The stats show that it's probably not uh, mm -hmm. historically, but... He needs to do it once again, and it's always a difficult time against the Snake as we open up here on Frigid Lake, our only hybrid map of this entire pool. So if we go to seven games, the remaining six are all going to be land maps. He is going to open with Khmer. Viper is going to open with Japanese, and with Japanese, you can get that dock down awfully fast. Yeah, minus 50% investment there for the Lumber Camp that we are building relatively early here. As you can see now, Vilissa, a bit house has to squeeze in Loom here. Rocky start. Yeah, really, really rough start for him here. With Khmer, you want everything to go perfectly, right? You want to hit those timings. That's why you're picking this sieve. He did go for that Lumber Camp opening, though, which we, we've seen from many players just go to the straggler trees and try and really push the limits. Hasn't made a dock yet, though. And uh, he's probably just going to open with a fast feudal and then go straight for the ships, or does he go for an archer range? People might go for both nowadays, right? Squeeze in some fire galleys out of one dock, then maybe a forward villager and go for the archer range. Would be the Mr. Yo approach here. Not the typical approach from villages, though. It, it feels more like archer range at home and walls up a bit more. Yeah, make it as consistent as possible. I mean, even without the early aggression, Khmer have a lot to offer on this map. I mean, they have a pretty varied tech tree. They have the farms you can place anywhere. Your base is going to be open, so you can hop inside those houses. As you can see right there, and uh, you don't need to make like the barracks if you're going to go for that archer range or for that stable. You also don't need the buildings to click up, so it, there's just a lot of synergy when you've got an open hybrid map like this. Mm -hmm. And Japanese, we questioned it quite heavily. Hera and Leary questioned it quite heavily. Yeah, they are nice, but also what we just looked at, Khmer look a bit stronger. That placement will be relatively early. He's waiting for the wood. He's mm -hmm. waiting for the wood. Of course, he had to go for the mining camp, so that's going to cost 100 wood. He almost has it now, and he's going to place that dock down. And like you said, it's not going to be a forward dock. It's going to be more consistent for the Finn Viper. Though picking Japanese, this is a good map to have Japanese on. He actually opens with a barracks. Yeah, and that's because his fishing ships have more HP, right? And the extra armor, so he knows. If you try to take me down with your fire galleys, my fishing ships are going to survive a bit longer, and it's unlikely that I will have too many losses, even though I'm maybe underproducing a bit on water. I actually like Viper's base, too. Like, if you look at the layout of his oh base, yeah. he's got two back wood lines, and he's got that gold. Like, even the berries aren't forward nilly. Crazy. Like, if he walls this correctly and then walls in front of the TC to that bar to that barracks, there's really no way in for Valesa to do damage. And Valesa has already scouted that out. He's going to be heading back with the scout. It's almost not even worth it to try and pick away at those Japanese fishing ships yeah. if you have a scout there. And there we have the sneaky archer range. Ooh. And that's what I love about the development in the last one or two years. There were so many players where you felt like, okay, those are predictable, mm -hmm. but they realized predictability means my opponent can get away with more stuff. And that's why we see people Look at this. off their style. He's tracking it already. As soon as he saw that barracks, he chased the fish away for a second, and now he knows exactly the timing on the militia. He's already in the feudal age, so his scout is going to do more damage. There's the archery range right there. But I think Viper's base is set up in a way where... Uh, if he walls in time, he should be safe from this pressure. Mm -hmm. The question is, can he wall in time? Right, because it's more likely that he will build an archer range now. Floating a lot of wood, hello. Where is he going here, Viper? Viper's going for that archer range, okay. Still has 200 wood in the bank. Did he scout only one dog? And maybe now thinks, okay, you're going for an archer range guaranteed. Mm. If he opens skirm here, because he saw the timing, he should be able to defend that. He's also keeping the wall open for the time being. Valesa does get that wall down. He can also hop in the houses too, which Viper needs to be careful about. Viper's still running his fish around. They're still alive because they're Japanese fishing ships. 
And now Viper will be looking for damage with these men at arms. One of those men at arms is straying pretty far behind them. No, he's coming from the other side. Perfect meetup. Mm -hmm. Loops around there. Fishing ship one goes down. Second one in quite some danger. I'm a bit surprised that Viper is committing to the men at arm upgrade. But remember, Willisse, he needs to use his house bonus at home. His archers will be super far away. Mm -hmm. Least hated hybrid. Frigid Lake mm -hmm. is the third most played map. And I think a big thing about this map is you can go land even if you lose that water pressure and it's not the it's not the biggest deal in the world, right? Early tower as well from Valesa. So he knew that he couldn't just defend against these uh, men at arms and potentially archers coming forward by just hopping in and out of the houses. He went for the tower for extra safety. I don't mind that decision. I like it quite a bit, especially because he can also farm around that area. So basically protecting three resources there with one single tower and Viper with his three men at arms. I don't think he will find too much. No, the archers are coming in. He's waiting. Valesa is waiting until he has two archers. He's still got that scout with a considerable amount of HP left on it. So he's going to push these villagers away. What's the decision making here from Viper? He's got an archer in the queue. He's struggling to save his villagers. No villagers down yet, but Viper looks to be attacking on the other side. I don't know if he's just targeting a house, though. He is. Okay. Sending his archers back. Now one in the queue. Viper, not unlikely that one villager will be in quite some danger, but those four archers will be tricky for, for Viper to deal with those if he's not skew, uh, queuing a scrum. Yeah, and he wants to stay on those berries, right? And he's already got two farms over there, so that's a big part of his food income now with the fishing ship missing he really has to respond to this he has taken out that scout which is good he's also going for a blacksmith here for early fletching and he's got three archers plus the villagers to push this back it looks like viper is going to be in a pretty decent uh position after he clears that up but it's a lot a lot of pain at the beginning yeah. oh, lost the water still lots of low hp villagers out there those archers can maybe find some damage viper with a small hill advantage oh this is intense Dave. It's like go, trying to go for gate blocks, trying to recede that farm by accident, instant delete, right? Trying to hold on with three archers. There's low HP on those. Viper still doesn't have fletching. He doesn't have the food for it. He goes for a skirmisher, still pushing these archers away with his villagers. The men-at-arms are not getting value, and Valesa is diving on these archers from Viper. Will Viper be able to do enough damage to defend with the skirmishers? Oh, yeah, yeah. One villager, uh, one skirmisher out. Now the second one in the queue, and this triggers the switch into a stable. Viper, yeah, he can go for some skirmishers, but needs to queue up archers behind this. Yeah, this is going to be really, really tough for the snake. I mean... A wall could go down there from Viper, but remember, you can't wall directly to the TC, so it can always, they can always sneak around, and also the berries and the farms already placed there. Super important for Viper. He doesn't want to abandon that position. He's going to find the archer range, does not find the stable just yet, as Valesa continues to farm with those wonderful Khmer farms that you can just mm -hmm. place anywhere. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, those archers, they're going for it, but they should be low skirms, maybe a bit higher. Oh. Oh. Viper knows they're somewhere around here, mm -hmm. man. He wants to go forward and look, but he also has game sense telling him he's keeping the archers around, and he sees that Valesa is producing more because that flag on the range, he hasn't just given up on this. Getting vision on that stable early would help so much, but he doesn't have any vision on that yet, and he's actually forced to bring back the men-at-arms. Usually, I don't like bringing back men-at-arms, but there's really nothing he can do, and those are actually going to buy him a lot more time. Yeah, he killed some houses. Velissa, though, replenished those, completely banning the bar uh, the berries here, and Velissa, he's looking for some kills. Viper! Viper, does he notice it in time? He's still got the villager there. He's paying attention somewhere else. Those archers are weak. The scouts are coming in. And Viper, once again, pulling the boys, pulling the g girls. He hasn't lost a villager yet. He's lost, well, did he lose one villager and two fishing ships, or was it? That's what I would assume. Okay, I three fishing ships. He only had two fishing ships early on. And I think... Viper, yeah, with the going for the defensive tower, feels like the safe option. Try to delay it for quite some time. This could be a dead villager. Yep, that is a dead villager. He's going to engage a little bit. Valesa just taking damage where he can. But if we look at the total res collected, I mean, it's still fairly even in this circumstance, right? Those Khmer farms are going to start to pull ahead. Valesa still hasn't added fish, and Viper got that fish income early. And just to give you an understanding on how brutal this game is, those are two of the best macro players in the world. Typically, in Dark Age, Fuel Age, you never have your TC not working. But both of them already above two minutes. I would never imagine that for these two players. Mm -hmm. I could see someone like Nikoff or Vinch that's going all in momentum, right? And they want all the resources. But for Viper and Valesa, you think about 
their style. It's just keeping that TC running. You can tell how little food they've had this entire time. And Viper is still sitting on zero food currently, but he's got at least two bills in the queue. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Zero food with four on food. Simply the uh, farm's not really working for him. And those berries now empty as well. He needs a market. Yes, he Seven does. Mil. Yes, he does. He's got a lot of gold in the bank, but I mean, he's managed to stay alive. And ever since he saw those first archers coming in, when he had no response to that, and ever since he lost that army of archers, that's the objective. We stay alive, we look for opportunities to come back in this game. Are we staying alive, though, if those scouts are getting in the archers? Nope. It's Viper. They're not getting in. He's already okay. got a house there. The archers are behind, but he can leave with that villager, Viper. Brings the army over, maybe baiting the army a little bit closer from Valesa with that villager staying longer. And then he's going to engage. Meanwhile, on the other side, he's scouting the eco a little bit. Valesa still only 250 food. I would have expected more at the moment. And he goes for another tower at the front. Super mm -hmm. safe. No berries, no fishing ships. Where should the food come from, right? He has mm, well, 10 he's farmers. Got the, he's got the okay, villagers okay. on the ibex in the center, right? He milled that really, really quickly. Okay, yeah, that certainly helps out. Now the defense here, men at arms in front of it, so I don't think Villisa should find too much. Viper, yeah, wisely focuses down the archers. Honestly, I think the response oh. to the... Oh, man, misposition there from Valesa for a second, but he gets away. I'm getting nervous for both players, especially for the Viper here, because those archers are in Woodland relatively exposed. And remember how many villagers fought earlier. Those should be really low HP. Yeah, if we select all the villagers here, we should see some on half HP. Maybe two-thirds. Viper's still engaging against the archers in the front. What's the response at the back? He attempts to go for a gate. It's not there. The archers are in. One villager down. Another villager will follow, and the farming eco is completely exposed. On that side, Viper's going to need to run away. He doesn't have any army to deal with this. Great split from Valesa, and Viper calls the GG. Ay, 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 ay. And uh, Penis sadly not able to deliver here. It was so interesting to see that super early barracks and mm -hmm. the extremely, well, underwhelming or like not the biggest investment into water there from the Japanese player. Yep. He made a decision to go land and. He couldn't get the damage done with the men at arms, but I think a big part of that was the defense from Lessa and then the pressure coming in at the perfect time. And honestly, I I didn't think Viper played that badly in terms of execution that game. It was pretty good, right? It's impossible to keep your TC running in that situation mm -hmm. once the archers come in. It was just kind of the strategic choice didn't match up at all against what Valesa opened with. Hmm. And ideally, this is the moment where I say, yeah, okay, but Khmer are highly prioritized. You have Japanese as one of the lower ones, so not such a big But he picked them so early. Then that's the problem. Yeah, he could have easily picked them as the last civilization civilization here, because Valesa goes Khmer, he goes like Byzantines as a mix-up potentially for Frigid Lake. I don't think Valesa picks Japanese at any point here. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm really surprised as well. But we we talked about our, about it with the Viper and he feels like they are having so many options. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. From here on though, only land maps, not even a single drop of water left here. Mm -hmm. We have Arabia enclosed outcrop for Viper. And then we look over on Valesa's side and he's got Fortified Clearing Hippo Arena, two of our most closed maps. And then suddenly just graveyards, which is like literally our most open map mm. that we have here, except maybe like Hippopotamus, which we mm. have only seen once, by the way, in this tournament. Disappointing, but we have three more best of nines. Best of nines. Yeah, to we're going to see it again. Mm -hmm. Two best of nines tomorrow, the semifinals, and another one, the finals on Sunday, 17 UTC. Also, credit to our team, credit to the players for getting into games so fast this entire oh, yeah. tournament. Like, the viewers, you can't click away because we have a one-minute break and then we're immediately into the action here. We've got Valesa playing as the Byzantines and Viper playing as the Mongols on Arabia. Interesting matchup here, Valesa choosing to go with Byzantines. A matchup that I don't remember ever seeing on Arabia. Right, it's so atypical. It feels like Byzantines are often mixed in on Arabia because they never have a bad matchup. Mongols kind of counter to a lot of civilizations trying to put on the pressure. This will be interesting. And you see, Vilissa realizes, okay, that Mongol player, they will go up quite quickly because their food income is just so much faster. And that's why Vilissa is walling here early to not take any major damage. 
I'm wondering if uh, Viper chooses to go for the Step Lancer approach here, even against the cheaper camels from Byzantines. It feels like if you have good enough micro, if you stack up enough of them in those early engagements, you can really get value, and then you can go for some pretty brutal raids. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I'm, I'm curious as to the Castle Age opening, because I can't see this game ending in feudal. Actually, I don't think it's too bad for Mongols to play a really long feudal age. Look at that. Gold, relatively open, can be pressured. Mongols, they can go for bloodline scouts. Byzantines can't. And if you force your opponent into, like, mass skirm spearmen, you're not too unhappy. So I wouldn't mind to see Viper not wall at all till we, he gets a lot of pressure done. Mm -hmm. And you can see him coming forward really early with that scout, too. Like, he's not back there looking for his sheep. I wonder what his scouting is looking like right now. Maybe he saw the very front of Alessa's base. He saw where the gold spot was, saw a woodline, and then he backs up. Still missing two sheep here is the Viper, and that might be the reason why he's going back. Didn't push any deer himself. That one is not his spot. That's a neutral one, and this one push not any scouted. Deer Mongols. Hmm. So he made the decision to come forward, take a look at Alessa's base, didn't find anything to steal and uh, Valesa has been pushing deer behind this so we'll see how this pans out for Viper there's nothing over on that side for him to find mm. he's gonna have to come back the other way but Viper gets loom and is on the way to the feudal age a full villager ahead of Valesa or rather Valesa is a full villager ahead of him or behind a feudal age how does that how do you say that full villager behind full villager ahead full feudal who are we talking about? I don't know. The, the one that is the villager now. behind <laughs> or the villager ahead? <laughs> I'm confused. Barracks so at the front. Vil ah, no, I get it. Uh, you are like Vilse From is Viper's a villager point of behind. View. Yes. So the Viper clicked but up he's ahead. the full villager. Because he's a villager ahead. Well, the timing is ahead. The amount is behind. Okay. So if you want to refer to the timing or to the economy, if you, it's the timing, then he's one villager ahead. Economy-wise, he's one villager behind. Love learning Til English now. from Germans. <laughs> it's my favorite pastime. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now the deer are being pushed in. So Viper is going to get that food in there, and it's 30 seconds until he reaches feudal age. That deer should be under his TC by then. Valesa is already walled up completely, and the opening here from Viper looks like it's going to be scouts to control the map. He's still playing fairly open. He actually pushed that to the mill because he wants more time to come forward which is interesting right because he will get a lot of vision anyways now building the stable here and i think he will get a good idea the problem is with his scout being at home pushing that one deer mm -hmm. Melissa is fully walled and viper not really having the intel about it at least for now sees the barracks sees the feudal age timing and Viper's going to get some good information here with his scout forward right away. Valesa not yet putting that second production building down. Doesn't have the wood just yet. Why am I getting memories of a Tato versus Villese game? Oh, that was Poles against Byzantines, though. Mm. Yeah, where Villese had a crazy defense, also walled super early, and somehow made Tato work quite a bit after being pushed back massively. And Villese? He goes for the wood upgrade first. I wouldn't be surprised if he even goes for the farm upgrade. Yeah, he's also going for a couple spearmen right away. Suspects that Viper might be playing in the scouts. Now, if you're in Viper's position, you know you're ahead economically right now because of the hunt coming in for the Mongols and because you haven't invested into the walls. What is your approach in Feudal Age if you open scouts? I think you need to find out if Willis is taking his gold here at the front, which is not unlikely, right? But Viper is not really confirming it. He didn't see... The archer, archers there, because obviously he saw no mining camp at that point, only now the mining camp being built. That means also some skirmishers being mi mixed in. Viper will have the map control. Either archer range or forward tower could be an option. I think the Viper approach would be the archer range. So Viper's going to produce more in the face of technical counter units coming mm -hmm. out from Valesa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, double spearmen will scare those away. For now, Viper just trades off some HP. Yeah, and he's holding this entire army in the center here. Valesa doesn't want those scouts to be picking off his reinforcements. Viper finds another good hit there against the skirmisher. This is good. Finding value wherever he can, and he's going for a skirmisher of his own. He's housed for a second. He will get Tau Watch. That just evens out the playing field mm -hmm. against Byzantines. Valesa starting with that, and uh, Viper will also have to defend himself with his hunters over here. That's a nice little touch. 
sending those villagers out there to get the food, but now he's a little bit exposed. Viper's POV here. He is sending the Skirm back, and how ballsy that is, right? He realizes, okay, your damage output is not really there. Skirm's not really the scariest thing together with the Spearman, and dives quite deep. A bit of a repeat of game one. Yeah, he's, he's pushing that army away as he waits for his Skirmisher count to get higher and higher. He's also going for a Blacksmith at the front you can see the way that he wants to wall off this base he wants to get a couple tiles in front of that gold secure so that valesa can't just camp outside of that with his range units smart walling from viper also fairly slow walling because he knows he can push this army away from valesa there's no immediate threat yeah with the mongols you don't really need to wall early right you know okay i can track the army oh Good pick Vince? that's the only cavalry unit right now for valesa that's the only unit with some mobility so no idea how to scout from here on. Could be the Viper adding a third military building. Could be the Viper going for an early castle age. Villisa will have no idea about a potential market timing either. And Viper has added a couple extra scouts. So he's got five scouts here just going fletching for his skirmishers. Fletching comes in for Valesa at the same time. The problem for Viper is obviously the mass for Valesa. The problem for Valesa is that he can't reinforce this army mm -hmm. because Viper is just hanging out behind. And it's a very deliberate thing from him. However, the army is coming forward and Viper can't really engage there just yet with the scouts because of the Spearman numbers from Valesa. Maybe he can force the army back by providing pressure here, but it's quite unlikely because the Finn is completely walled. It is three archer aggression here. Not the craziest thing ever. Obviously, four skirms won't do too much either. And right now, Villisa, he's just happy. Playing one archer range, archer production continues to increase his economy as well. Viper, maybe you should think about the armor upgrade here. Yeah, potentially. It doesn't help too much against the skirmishers, but it really helps against the archers. But like you said, there's not that many archers there. Mm hmm. Oh, scares those away. Easy wall behind it. And. Yeah, those spearmen, they shouldn't really find too much either. The Viper, he's not too far away from Castle Age. He stopped production. I like how he's not giving Vlesa any opportunities with these fights. Yeah, yeah. He's not giving him any opportunities to kill units. He's keeping the scouts looping around behind, and he's pulling them outside of Vlesa's vision every so often, even though Vlesa has Town Watch, so that he can't tell exactly where that army is, and this results in potential damage right there. Valesa is fast enough to send that Spearman back, but Viper dips away, and the KD right now is 4-1 to one for Viper. The resources, like you said, looking a little bit better for him as we switch now into Valesa's point of view. He's trying to control that hill, but here come the scouts. Spearmen are out of position. However, he has two more to the right side, and it's, it's just a beautiful dance going on from both players. Oh man, saves those spearmen. That was really nice how he positioned himself and is now trying to chase this one down. Skirm count not that high for the Viper anymore. Yeah, Viper just defending. He's banking up resources to go to Castle. He has to make sure that he doesn't get too greedy and cut production altogether because Valesa could be on that gold pretty soon if he's not careful. Okay, let's take a look here. Still, how greatly Willis is moving with back with his spearmen. Keeps them alive at all times and Castle Age timing actually probably closer than I would have expected initially when Villisa was still building farms and Viper had like 300 food already. Oh, that farm setup is beautiful for him. Let's take a look at the farm setup from Viper behind. Also pretty good over there. And uh, still defending with the skirms. The scouts have taken like no damage this game, Nilly, and he's mm -hmm. gonna find an archer. This is what nice. he's been looking for. Vales has been so careful, but every single one of these units you pick off is huge value. Absolutely, and it just puts the threat into Villas's head as well, right? He can't really reinforce. Yeah. Oh, this could there's be another open. one. No, nice. How many kills do those scouts alone have? Like five, six already? Uh, they have eight now. Oh, no, no, no. He oh, had the whole army selected. Okay. okay. They have three kills, mm -hmm. but they forced Valesa to be very, very uh -oh. careful. Now, is that wall open? It is not. Viper was just double checking mm -hmm. to see if it was, and he's on the way to the castle age, but so is Valesa. Bloodline's coming in now for Viper. He's still making some skirms, but there's a second stable. And now the big question. You m r raised the question earlier. Are we going for step lancers here? Knights could be an option as well. Those are only three spearmen now going pretty aggressively. Oh, this could be a clear up of the Feudal Age army if Valesa sl somehow slips up. Yeah, it could be a clear up of Viper's army if he just sends it in there. He's got to be careful with that tree. Mm -hmm. It's resulting in some pretty bad pathing. <laughs> and the scouts are just kind of hanging around, right? Valesa yeah, would yeah. love to not have to focus on those spearmen, but he has to keep them near his army. And Viper is thinking about pouncing here. Another tree being pretty annoying. The spearmen getting some hits. He's trying to micro them down. He's gotten two of them. And it looks like Viper is going to have full map control coming into the castle age. 
with potential to open knights, potential to open uh, step lancers, and potential to make camels as well. Oh yeah, and this is really, really nice for the Viper. Upgrades even kicking in there, has bloodlines, has the first armor upgrade as well, and those spearmen going in again, but another kill. Yeah, great army control. Look at the KD right now, Nelly. 20 to 7. Wow. That's actually kind of wild for a game that has seemed so passive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, but that only happened in the last minute, right? Before that, it felt like it might have been like 5-5. Like eight to 4 or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. like that in favor of Viper. And now we've got the scouts working away on that final army. Valesa won't be able to leave his base for a considerable amount of time. I'd actually like to see Viper save that scout and use it to explore the rest of the map because I don't think it's giving you all that much right now other than exploring the, that double stable approach. Skirms have to go away. Would ideally try to pressure that gold there, but not really given to him simply because... The camels could even deal with those skirms. Has to wait for the step lancers to join the army. How many step lancers do you make in an opening? Okay. All of them. <laughs> Question is answered. He's made two of them. He's going to look for opportunities, and then he's going to go into the camels. If you're going straight camel v camel, though, Mongols against Byzantines, it doesn't feel the greatest because the Byzantine camels are cheaper. Mm -hmm. Pound for pound, though, if we get to that, Bloodlines. might be better. Yep. Indeed, 20 more HP. Viper already adding. The monastery, those step lances shouldn't really find too much. Felissa, way too good. Yeah, unless there's an overchop or something, maybe mm -hmm. they get in, but it's still, it's only two step lancers. Ideally, you want like six, so you can come in and poke the villagers one or two shots. Viper is using that scout, by the way, to scout the rest of the map. That's something he does, I think, better than anyone else. Potentially, yeah. And we have three very open goals, right? So if Viper identifies that, he knows, okay, heavy castle edge pressure could pay off, not the big fight. Big fight. He does have Bloodline's advantage. He also has those skirms. Now, the skirms don't seem super valuable, but they're chipping damage away from the camels. And uh, Valesa needs to run away. First monk is grabbing the relic already, and it's a double monastery mm -hmm. from the Mongols. You don't see that one every day. And we had that discussion on the sofa earlier, right? What is the best unit we have in Age of Empires right now? And some people are saying, some of the top players are saying, it is the monk. Mm -hmm. Pound for pound. Pound for pound. Pound for pound. Only it's just kind gold. of it, the monk is like a slot machine, right? You just <laughs> you pull the lever and you hope for the best, <laughs> but uh, occasionally it does pay off. And double monk trying to get conversions. Viper's gonna get one here. He does lose the initial monk. Can he save this one? It doesn't look like it. Valesa in a little bit of a rough spot in between those monasteries, and he's gonna take some damage as the skirms continue to get value. Town center as well. Fletching was there. Step oh, nice gets the kill. Great snipe, and oh. here come the camels from the other direction. Valesa dips, Valesa ducks, Valesa dives, and he gets out of that situation. What on earth was that pathing, dude? So good from Valesa to take all the proper angles. Did he oil himself up before the set? He, there? Greased, he, him, dude, he, he greased himself up for sure. Mm, finished sauna there, greasing <laughs> himself up and slips through those camels. Wow, I think I would have lost all four camels there. Mm -hmm. All right. Third TC for Valesa, that's what he's known for. Third TC coming up from Viper. He's a little bit housed right now, but that uh, if you quote MBL, that means you're producing. <laughs> it's a good thing, because it means you're producing. And we look at the army numbers, 24 to 15 in favor of Viper. Seven of those, of course, skirmishers, but he does have more monks on the field. One thing we have to mention, Mongol monk tech tree, not the greatest in the world. <laughs> yeah, really underwhelming, missing lots of key upgrades. While Byzantine, something we don't, typically mention, but they actually heal double the speed or something, right? Mm -hmm. Two times the speed, uh, which oh is oh. wild in, in fights like this, where camels aren't doing an extreme amount of damage. Mm -hmm. Feels like you can just heal them up from behind. So Valesa might even want to think about adding another monastery of his own. The skirms are going to get value for Viper, though, if he does that. They can dive in and, and you know, it's a, it's a great thing that he's kept those things alive because they have added a ton of value so far this game. Mm -hmm. And just to give you some comparison of the Messi game one now to this game, right? This was also aggressive in idle CC time, now way, way lower yep. because they could go into their normal game, st uh, game style gives you some idea how wild game one was. And most of Viper's idle TC time is coming from the fact that he's been housed a ton. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the skirms are providing value, but maybe if the skirms had been deleted earlier, <laughs> <laughs> he would have had more villagers by now. 69 villagers for Valesa, 61 villagers for Viper. He is getting hand cart right now, and his eco upgrades look beautiful at wow. this stage of the game. All six eco upgrades? That's all of the ones Mongols can get by the 26 minute marks? 
Viper is absolutely set up for success here. Valesa, though, was the first player to stone, and he's already got 200 stone. He's already got seven on stone still. The Camels are coming in. Viper's looking for conversions. Yo would have already had two units by now, <laughs> but Viper is not going to be lucky enough to snag those. Chance for atonement for Valesa here. I think if we go full Camel, Camel, Viper actually could get an advantage, having the defender's advantage here with double monastery. Can't get atonement himself, I believe, against Velissa. I think he can get atonement. atonement? Okay. I think Mongols do get atonement. We're going to need a fact check on that one. But I, I believe that is one of the few texts that the Mongols actually receive in their monastery as... they don't get anything. The skirmishers kind of get nuked there by the Mangonel. They lose one of them, but there's four units, five units now targeted by Viper, and he's going to convert two camels. He's pushing forward with the monks. He's got all of his camels moving forward. He loses one monk to the Mangonel, but it is Valesa who will need to run here, and he's pathing all the way through these camels for Viper. Ay, 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 ay. Nice conversions here. Now the... Monks are getting killed as well, down to two monks versus six monks here. Brilliant engagement for the snake. That is just fantastic map control from Viper, and now it is Valesa's turn to be housed here. Wow, these guys are just going back and forth in this middle area. It feels <laughs> like they have no opportunity to pressure whatsoever. Archer range is now being added in behind from Valesa. This game is, like, no one's taking any damage, but it's so tense because, you know, yep. one big battle can just swing this completely, especially for Valesa. If he clears up this army from Viper, he has enough stone for a castle. He can kind of put it in the middle of the map and carry his, his momentum forward. And there's some good hills for that, right? And that's why he continues producing army here in Castle Age. Now queues up crossbows, actually floating quite a bit of food. So maybe usage of the market there in option. Viper going up, maybe. Viper has handcart with 32 on food. Like, that food is going to be coming in awfully quickly, and he's got a ton of gold here. His farm eco is all over the place. He does have a market, and now he's going out to the stone and getting that stone mining upgrade. Efficiency for both of their economies, I would bet, is pretty, pretty good with all these eco upgrades. I would assume so as well. University there at the left-hand side. Viper Ooh. tries to move in, and oh, oh, they will both miss each other, but no. Valissa goes back. And yeah, Valissa will see that. Town patrol for Byzantines is wild. Like, there's no sneak attacks happening here mm -hmm. from Viper, as Valessa is the first one on the way to the Imperial Age. Viper will join him shortly. And Viper, he kind of deked away. Valessa felt really comfortable because it's been a back and forth game. Viper picks off a few villagers, and it's Viper's turn to squeak his way away from this engagement. Or is he going to take it? Oh, ah. no. He goes through the hits from Valessa. He loses about four camels. And some HP. I aye, aye, aye. Needs to go back and heal up there. Those were three villager kills with that step Lancer getting one and the camels getting two. But, oh, Phyllis has split his army. Uno reverse card there from Viper. He was on the run and then he turned around with bloodlines. He technically has the better camels. Mm -hmm. He's going to engage against that. No first attack upgrade for Viper. No second attack upgrade there for Valesa, but same armor upgrades, and Viper chooses to take that fight for some reason. He's going to get completely cleared up. Wow, I don't understand this one at all. Needed to buy himself more time to tech into Mangoda. is trying to go for that. 16 on stone, and those will join the party pretty soon. So I think something around 25 on stone. Mangoda is which, what he wants to go in for, but how can he survive that long? And now he's going into Skirm as a defensive measure. Like, if he had kept those camels alive, I think he buys himself, like, another minute and a half at mm. least. And it's only one archery range, right? That will be four skirms, elite skirms soon. But that's not enough against all those crossbows. No. And his wood eco is just not looking good enough to start adding additional archer ranges or additional skirms. He has house walled all the way to the left wood line there. And Valesa still hasn't done any eco damage to him just yet, missing ballistics, so he won't be able to hit that villager. But Viper might be in trouble here as Mongols really struggle on the transitions. He's going to need a ton of time to get into his ultimate composition. Just now getting Ballistics. Still has a minute away from Imperial Age as Valesa hits Imp. And Viper will be forced into a second defensive castle. Ooh, how is Viper surviving this one? How can he maybe get a conversion here? How many conversions does he need? Even if he gets four, most of his monks should die here in the skirms. Damage output not as, is not high enough. Yeah, I think he got two conversions there. It just wasn't enough. The skirms are holding back the crossbows to an extent, but the camels for Valesa are still alive. Treb's now coming out from Villa, or from Valesa, sorry. And uh, he's adding siege workshops forward. Is it gonna be uh, bomber cannon? cannons? Or Maybe is it gonna it's be a rams. ram play? We have barely seen any rams. Yeah. 
I think Rams could work because all of Viper's production buildings are at the front here. He's got this wall that he's hiding behind, and I think that's going to be just so much faster than Bomber Ken is, but he is getting chemistry right now, so it's probably going to be the Bomber Ken in play. Mm -hmm. I, I would not have mind to see some Rams here, right? Skirm is horrible against it. You don't really want to go there with your Mango Dice and try to contest them with so many crossbows soon to be Arbalest around. Pro big problem. Viper with zero on gold right now. Mm -hmm. Zero on gold. That gold is obviously forward there. He does see the one at the back as the Treb now sets up on the hill. Ready to work away on that castle. Valesa is pretty confident in that Treb because all he sees are range units here from Viper. And Viper just doesn't have the time or resources to attack into any melee options. Ah, yeah. Okay, we are now getting Bracer here. Soon 25 skirmishes on the field. In this scenario, if Viper doesn't lose anything. But how is that even an option? Look at all those Arbalas even slaughtering those skirms. Still not having all the upgrades. And there is enough stone for another castle from the Finn, right? There's almost enough stone for two more castles from him. He's at 170 population right now. He's got two more bomber cannons coming out. And Viper is sitting at 140. Viper has still only lost four villagers this game. Mm -hmm. But once this wall at the front is gone, that, that number gets a lot bigger. And Villisa doesn't even care about upgrading his camels, right? He sees... You are going for mass range. I will make sure to keep my trap production high to get rid of all your castles. He, he's hit three trap shots in a row here, Nelly. Can he go four for four? Nope. But kills the villager. <laughs> so uh, uh, technically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, an went down there. Technically correct. <laughs> and all those skirmishers still trying to make the defense happen. Elite skirmishers, if they had all the upgrades, still not bad against under-upgraded camels and arbalest viper making somewhat of a hold the thing it looks bad for him nilly but i've seen viper win games like this a million times in the past like where it looks terrible but he's slowly expanding out he's just slowly pushing his economy he's not losing any villagers and he's holding with skirmishers there's definitely a chance for him but right now the less be, looks to be in a pretty commanding position on that hill yeah, if Viper can set himself up, right? Mass elite skirmishers can get for Hussars all the upgrades. He can get a lot of map control rolling for himself. Traps, shots still hitting. Bombard cannons could be focused down here. Yeah, and the Arbalist now, the control wavering a little bit here for Valesa as he's sending them into the castle fire. Viper feels comfortable enough to go out towards this hill. He's going to try and snipe those Arbalists. Then he can work away on the bomber cannons. Treb still firing from behind. Viper still holding on to that castle. How many villagers do we have repairing that castle in the vicinity? There are 33. I think there's like 30 of those working away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, seems like it, right? How much stone did he invest in there? Like 500 at least, obviously repairing something is for 50% of he's the cost. Also, he's also raiding a little bit at the back of Valesa's base, but I think that's probably scouts. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah camel camel. scouts. Valesa doesn't notice that just <laughs> uh, yet. A trip, one trip does go down. Valesa losing a lot of gold units here. Arbalest down, Camels down, right? Bombard cannons in some danger, but Viper Skirm number simply not looking that hot. Only at 12 right now. I think you go after those Bomber cannons if you're Viper. I mean, there's not much space for Valesa to move those around, right? You target them on the trebs. Viper still holding on to this castle. He's trying to fire on the siege, but the castle finally falls, and Viper will need to abandon this position. What is the next course of action for him? He's only got Light Cav with the plus two armor, and he's only got 16 skirmishers on the field right now. Ah, uh, needs higher numbers there. Somehow able to deal with those camels has to be his goal, but that's really tricky. Skirmisher numbers simply not enough, and even if so, they are on the great counter against Cavalry. It feels like ever since that battle in mid Castle Age, right when they were transitioning to Imperial Age, Viper calls the GG. It feels like ever since he lost those camels, he just couldn't prevent any pressure coming from that front side. I am so surprised that he took that fight. Maybe he was focused on the monks at the back, but still, you got to hold on to those camels. You've been back and forth all game. You can't give your opponent a big swing like that. It felt like a conscious fight. Maybe he saw that Villisa had husbandry and he didn't. It certainly was surprising because how we viewed it is Viper tried to have the double castle set up, tried to go to elite Mango Die, tries to buy himself time. And then taking fights against the Castle Age army was something that we didn't really anticipate. Yep. Okay, so it's Viper's pick on the maps once again. Remember, this is a best of seven. So Viper has at least 
Uh, two more games to make something happen here mm -hmm. against Valesa, and I'm wondering what his map selection is going to be. He picked his own home map, Arabia. I know, however, that Viper likes mixing it up and not just picking his own home maps and picking his opponent's home maps uh, because he's going to have to play them anyway if, uh, if he's going to come back from a 2-0 scenario. Mm -hmm. I think so going for a uh, slow map could make a lot of sense. I think Viper goes for enclosed here. Kay. But if I clearing arena could also be something that makes a lot of sense momentum wise. But I feel like Villager could be a bit more comfortable because, well, technically his so maps. I think enclosed could make a lot of sense. Something like Chinese against Berbers. Not unlikely. What do you think about that double monastery play from Viper? Atypical, right? Yeah. Against all the camels. Knight v knight, it makes more sense. But rule of thumb, the cheaper the opponent's unit, the less efficient your monks are. Mm -hmm. And if Byzantines is a civilization that builds all their units cheaper, they will have more on the field, it's tougher for you to convert, and if you get the conversion, your new unit is also weaker. Mm -hmm. So t against Byzantines, I think I don't remember seeing a game where we see a double monastery play. And we're going on to graveyards. Wow. So it's not a closed map like you thought. Viper's going to play the Huns. Valesa's going to play the Franks. Two pretty good sieves uh, for this open style. And you mentioned before uh, we were on air that Doubt really loves playing the Huns on graveyards. And he plays them. I, I remember watching a few games with him. He plays them in such a classic way, right? Like just open, all aggression. Do you think Viper goes through an approach like that? Or is he a little bit more safe? Faster stable, obviously pretty sweet. He can go for mass CA, mass map control. And if we just zoom out a bit here, the map is tough to wall, right? Yeah, they're natural walls, but they're so far away from your starting town center that you can't really reinforce them. Mm -hmm. Also, 11 relics on this map. The wood lines are tiny. Mill before lumber camp from the Viper. Interesting. With okay. Hans. Hey, so he's going to be taking wood from the straggler trees here. And he goes for the... Why would you... Faster food income? Maybe he didn't scout a proper woodline yet. Maybe he directly ran into if we look at the it, deer. If we look at his point of view... That's not pretty. Maybe the one at the left he feels could be a straggler. Ran directly into the deer at the right-hand side. And now commits to lumber camp at the front. Yeah, at the front there. Or maybe over to the left-hand side. He's going to explore this area and go for the lumber camp. At the end of the day, it's not the biggest hit. Ever, it's just a little bit unorthodox. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about how to open here, and he's going to have less straggler trees to take later on. Like we said, not the biggest deal in the world. He should also find those sheep as soon as that lumber camp is up as well. So, Viper, decent start here. Valesa on the other side playing as the Franks. Now, the Franks obviously get their farm upgrades for free, which can be huge on the transitions. It means your eco is really good behind this. Also, they take in the berries 15% faster, um, and their cavalry have plus 20% HP. So your immediate boost in feudal age, you have an advantage over your opponent if you're going scouts. However, once Bloodlines comes in for those scouts, Viper scouts will technically be better. Mm -hmm. So... Also the scenario where we could see a very long feudal age, maybe even better than Arabia, right? I said it with Mongols, I can't really rule it out. But Willise, he was completely walled at six minutes. Something that will be impossible, impossible here on Drag Graveyards unless you are Mr. Yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and playing as the Burgundians. Yeah. 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 But I think Mr. Out. Yo playing as the Burgundians is walled at two minutes on any map. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way he plays them. Burgundians, I think, sniped in this uh, in this set, if I remember correctly. Valesa got them as his first overall pick. Viper continues to push here. He's up a villager behind Valesa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll allow it. Uh, I will allow it, says Nilly, and I am a proud proud Padawan here. <laughs> <laughs> Learning. <laughs> Thank you, Learning sense. English. Thank you, Sensei. <laughs> Um, As the scout comes in from Valesa, he's going to discover where Viper's base is. I don't think Viper has scouted at all. You won't be part of the council, though. <laughs> I won't be part of the council, but I want <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so mean. And he didn't find Viper. He didn't find anything, did he? I'd miss him. I'm not sure if the texture could. Okay, found tell the gold. Him he something. found the four tile gold. 
at the at front. The front. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, so he, he should know. know. He should know, yeah. yeah. All the neutral golds here are three tiles along with the stones, except for the starting gold right there. And he's going to find the second lumber camp over there from Viper. Viper has the barracks up. He's going for the stable. He's going to scout the stable from Valesa. No surprises here for either player. Yeah, both players so good there with the cavalry, as you said. More HP, faster working stables for the Huns. You don't need to build any houses, and that's why you have so much more here in the bank when it comes to resources. Can afford both eco upgrades. And the Franks, they don't even need to try and afford one of those eco upgrades. So they can just drop their farms right away if they need to and start getting their food eco rolling. Right now, though, for Valesa, it looks like he's looking pretty good in terms of food. He's still got berries left over, still has sheep left over. There's the first farm. And he's going to try to set up a wall along the front and then a wall towards his TC. Viper is going to be doing the same thing. We're probably going to see an extended feudal age here. I think they'll have their walls down fairly early, though, so I don't know how much damage we'll see in Feudal Age. Just kind of jockeying for map right. control. And both of them building the walls kind of in front of their goals, right? So they could be secured there, could technically go for the archer range. Still a bit surprising to me that Villise is either cutting corners or forgot to do the wood upgrade. Mm -hmm. That's not something you see every day from him. No. I mean, he should have the resources shortly, and if he wanted to, he could even unqueue a villager and go for it, like... It's, it's, I think he forgot. Potentially something he forgot, and it could be a storyline here moving forward in this game. We'll see if he keeps on checking that lumber camp. Viper and it looks like he, he's not going to. Viper has only two spearmen on the field. Often do we see people Evil committing way. to more spearmen here. Obviously, crazy damage output against the scouts. Oh, a bit on the aggressive side here. And feels like early map control goes into Villa's favor. Yeah, and that, I think. He was the first one to get up to that hill, right? And that hill is going to be a deciding factor in the map control. It's slightly closer to Viper's base, so Viper might have to stay a little bit more defensive. Franks are 0 and 4 on dry graveyards. And one of those was Viper losing to Valesa on day one. Uh, let's stop there. reading because the scouts could get in here. Viper's not focusing this one. No quick houses walls. for Huns. He can't do houses, but he gets a quick wall in time. And he hits the second one. Viper's not going to let them through. Valesa unable to find early damage here with the scouts. Super important. This could have been GG, right? If the scouts are getting in, two, three villagers dead, you have to go back with your scouts, trying to find some damage here. Valesa, good spot here for him. Has the scouts already prepared for the defense. And it makes it super tricky sometimes because you kind of forget you're playing Huns. So you try and go for that house <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, double yeah. tile wall, and you're like, oh, no. And you just can't quite hit that timing. But Viper remembered that he can only go for Palisade Walls. So great stuff there from him, getting some downhill hits against Valesa here. Remember, Valesa's scouts have more HP at the moment. He still has found his way in. Viper with the quick walls around the lumber camp, and Viper is gonna say goodbye uh, with those scouts as he leaves Valesa's base. He's trying to come in on the left-hand side of Valesa's base as well, under that TC. Oh, it's a volley there. A bit surprising to me. Two spearmen can maybe get some hits off. Uh-oh, macro slip up. Nice hits there from Viper as Viper gets away with his other scout army. Valesa is just trying to be annoying here. Viper walling up a little bit, trying to block with the villager and get some more arrow hits. Neither player on gold so far. That means more scouts here. Villas is still without the wood upgrade. Might bite him later on. Now the first mining camp here on Viper's side. Mm -hmm. Same timing Mining for Valesa. for Valesa, and it is remarkably similar here, folks. Viper with a little bit more idle TC time. He won't be getting housed this game, but he does find an additional scout there. The question will be, what are we transitioning into? Viper even going for wheelbarrow. We have seen it being researched earlier by him in another That's game That's like an old well. school type of approach, isn't it? You're playing scouts, you go wheelbarrow. I know I was asking, uh, was it you who were involved in that conversation? Someone was asking, when do you get wheelbarrow? And you say, you did never click in Feudal Age? Did I annoyingly talk about old Hunt days? Then it was a different caster. Oh, no, 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 no. I would remember that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think a typical timing for wheelbarrow is before you get to like the fourth town center, right? Mm -hmm. So mid castle age there is a pretty standard timing. But maybe it's going to help Viper out here as he has a heavy farm eco. Also with the blacksmith left of that stable and a second stable of his own. He's not adding any additional spearmen, so he knows the overinvestment isn't coming here from Valesa. Valesa, competitive resources. Looks like they're going to click up at about the same time. He's slightly ahead on gold, though, and that might be the difference. 
Okay, Scout's not really finding anything. Oh, diving again, and Viper needs to quick wall behind this one. Woodline still reasonably quick walled earlier. Nice positioning here, and feels like no losses on Viper's side. Musta keeps trying to come in. He's going to pick away at this villager, and he isn't. Oh, he does get her. The other guy jumped in. The flag appeared. I thought she was safe, but she ends up dying. So first villager kill of the game, and Valesa is on the way to the Castle Age. Viper, like we said, doesn't quite have the gold. And he's going to be a little bit slower to the Castle Age. Army compositions here. Velissa most likely going to commit Mass Knight. And the big question mark, Viper. Is it going to be the triple archery range play? We can see it from CA sometimes, but double stable kind of indicates this should be Mass, Light Calf, Monks, Squeeze with some Knights. Mm -hmm. Still no double bed axe for Velissa. Mm -hmm. He definitely forgot it, but he's going to remember it as soon as he hits Castle Age yeah, and he yeah. goes for Bosa. Yeah, and we, we will have to take a look at his face then, yep. right? Because early Castle Age likely to be clicked and some head shake or some raised eyebrows, not impossible there. Esports head shake? Mm -hmm. We're bringing it back. <laughs> We're bringing it back, baby. Yeah, we already got uh, uh, Esport Exciting mm -hmm. and Esport Laugh from Mr. Yo today when the Ballista Elephants arrived. You got to love Yo yeah. in that situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I could just, I saw his mouth move from the screen and I could just hear what he said. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Viper floating quite a lot of wood. This will be a relatively boomy game. Let's remember ourselves that there are 11 relics on this map mm -hmm. and it feels like five are at the bottom of the map here. Right, some at the top, but this feels like the most important area. Three at the top and... This should be a bit better for Villisa then. Villisa has come in this way into Viper's base probably five times. Mm -hmm. There is the there's the double bit axe right there. I didn't see any reaction from him as he realized that he didn't have that for the entirety of Feudal Age. And he is behind in resources collected, right? Maybe that's wheelbarrow. Maybe that's double bit axe kind of adding up mm -hmm. a little bit here. Actually, both players with wheelbarrow here. And just knights v knights. And Viper, he had to invest into Bloodlines while Villisa basically got that one for free. And this will be a good advantage for the Viper in the sense that he will have scouts left and he should be able to snipe a lot of those monks. Mm -hmm. They're going to continue to add value. Villisa is still with three of those scouts and he can c bring them back and heal them up. Mm -hmm. He is going for that second town center around the same time. Viper actually working on a yeah. third town center now. Loading quite some resources. Those villagers are pretty exposed. Scouts going into that direction. Unscouted by villagers so far. Those knights could take the fight with the help of the scouts, but probably want to disengage for now. And heavy plow already coming in from Viper. So he's planning on a pretty big farming eco coming right up, folks, as the <laughs> light cav upgrade is in, and he looks for damage, but Valesa spots him and Viper pulls his army away. They're just... It feels so similar to last game, doesn't it? They're just poking away at each other. They're trying to get little advantages. Viper coming from behind. He's he's deliberately taking a bad fight so his light cap can catch up from behind this army, trying to get some value against these knights from Valesa. He doesn't want to lose any of the light cap, but he does successfully pull off a flank and he's going to be able to push those knights away. And light cap faster, so he might even get one, two more kills. Does not have husbandry while we see Valesa already having husbandry goes back and likely to heal up. Sits at two monks for now. What's your relic grabbing strategy here if you're Viper? Do you go for the far ones first? Do you grab the, the one right in your base first? I think since our economies are so weak here still mm -hmm. at 43 villagers, having a relic in your monastery gives you roughly one and a half villagers on gold, right? So it's just so easy to go for it. I, I would go for the approach, get the close ones first. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we see Viper taking the risk, though, to go to those far ones because it's not only giving your economy a boost, it's denying it, of course, yeah. from your enemy. And sometimes he gets really, really crazy yeah. with the relics that he goes for first. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The thing is, you need map control for that, right? Right now, it seems like he is a bit more active on the map. But also remember something we didn't really mention, although it was shown. More line of sight for the Frank Knights, yep. actually helping out in those scenarios. Yeah, plus two line of sight for them. It's not a bonus you think of every day yep. um, when you're considering the civilization. And Viper is now spotting that monk. He's got light caps, so that monk is two hits away from death. 
However, the Knights are there. Viper should be able to path around. He splits, looking for the damage on the Monk. Now the Light Cav are pathing around. Valesa saves all of his Monks. And Viper loses those four Light Cav. That is terrible for him. Holy moly, what was that micro from Valesa? I, against another player, Viper killed the two Monks there and gets out of there to the left-hand side. Crazy defense. Yeah, and that was like Viper deliberately tried to split around, right? Yeah. But Valesa, he positioned all of his Knights individually to get in front of those Light Cav to block them from getting the kill at the same time as pulling his Monks back. Really, really great stuff from the Finn. Ay, 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 and now the Spearman coming over. Okay, at least one. Oh, what? Converted there the transition. He was deep into the conversion. Just turned around and took the knight back. That's something you can do. That is the game we are currently playing. That was uh, something I didn't expect. I thought the monk lost his conversion timing there, but, well. My man was charging up. Mm hmm this knight has been awfully annoying on this side. Viper's constantly responding to this. Villager count remarkably even right now. 62 villagers for Viper, 60 villagers for Valesi. Still doesn't have the second wood upgrade because he went to the lumber camp ah, yeah. once on Castle Age. Uh -oh. So we'll see that in him. <laughs> even uh, though Franks don't get the imp one, we may not even see it <laughs> at any point this game. Oh, one monk exposed. Second one goes out, down as well. At least one conversion successful here. Monk count. Five against three, both players realizing how good conversions are in those scenarios. And we look at the army numbers for Viper here, Nilly. I mean, it's starting to swing big time, especially if he gets a good engagement here. Viper does not have forging. He does not have that second armor, but he does have light cav, and he's sending them in to snipe the monks. He does get that monk right there. He's got spearmen still to support and two monks of his own to heal up his army behind. The production from him has been kind of crazy and uh, he still has a villager lead. We look at the relic count right now. Viper's got two in his monastery. Valesa only with one, but like you said, there's five, sorry, four relics now in that bottom corner of the map, slightly closer to Valesa's base. Actually pretty crazy, right? How much we are fighting for the relics and that only three have been picked up by now, but that's simply because players are so oh, good. That's a converted light cap, right? Yeah, yeah oh. I don't think Valesa tacked into light cap himself. That's, that's so frustrating. That's so frustrating to lose a monk to that, especially when you thought you were going to get both of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but still, some have control for Viper there at the right-hand side. KD, shockingly low. Mm -hmm. I, I would have expected something like 30-30. We saw so much fighting. The execution is, is brilliant here for both of these guys as Valesa now pulls those weak knights away. Viper couldn't help himself. He saw the HP on them. He's like, I'm going in. Yeah. And Valesa gets the conversion. Now Valesa... Picking away at this TC once again, and Viper's wood lines are looking a little bit scarce here, and he can't fit anyone else in that TC. Maybe he should have ungarrisoned at the top and garrisoned the exposed ones in there afterwards, but Valesa gets a lot of villager kills and manages to run away with a good portion of his army. 8-0 KD here. Conversions weren't really coming in. Some villagers even still chasing. Could be one, two dead knights. Military-wise, we are looking at 21 versus 27 knights, so slight advantage for the Viper. Viper, try those are the weak knights, I think, from the top there, <laughs> I believe. Oh, did he save them? I think he might have saved them. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back at a later <laughs> date and examine. Tell me your story, knights. <laughs> <laughs> As Valesa saves more weak units, but he's got to be careful because this is something the Huns can do, right? It sneaks up on you. You feel like you're competitive, and now you're stuck in the middle here, and the wave of Hunnic cavalry is coming, and Viper has a superior force. So Valesa needs to be careful he doesn't get snowballed in this situation. This is the moment where we add stables here for the Viper. I think we already see three stables for Valesa, add some more now. So they will play five stables here from the Frank player. Viper, is he still sitting on two? Would be shocking. Is that the same knight? I just keep seeing like one HP knights <laughs> running away and Viper's like trying to dive in. He does get it. The knight has fallen and so has the monk as that singular light cab gets a snipe right there. Viper's pushing in. He's getting forging right now and forging is going to click as soon as he takes this fight. So good timing there from Viper. He's going to notice this TC at the front. And Valesa, I mean, he just doesn't have the numbers. And also the HP on those, right? Yeah. Those knights, they didn't have the time to get healed up. While the Viper, he's sitting on so much HP. Look at that. It feels like everyone is at 
Yeah, Viper has done a fantastic job. How long has he kept these these monks alive? Crazy. I mean, it's wild, right? I'm surprised with the lack of kills for each of these armies, too. Like, we see 11 kills for one, 8 for the other as the fight now is taken. Viper is positioning his monks in the middle of these knights. He's blocking Valesa from sniping them from behind. He brings more knights back there. And he's going to lose one monk, but he will save the other, and he's healing up his units from behind. And pr uh, punishing the knight that went down. The other monk got a conversion now as well. Pretty nice move. And it just feels like Viper forces so much idle time. That TC can't work. Yeah, and we look at the TC idle time right now. Nine minutes for Valesa, a super impressive. Four minutes and 44 seconds from Viper with four TCs. That's a lot of fours, but it's also a ton of villagers. The Huns are just popping off here. 38 knights on the field right now, Nilly. Viper is on a warpath. I think still out of two stables, right? They constantly produce their yep. crazy Never stop. At least got three out now. But still, okay, and finally gets the second armor upgrade. He's ready to take a fight. Villicid knows that a big attack is coming, tries to get a defensive castle up. He can hop in that TC, he can protect the villagers, but if Viper is taking and winning this fight, there's no chance for that castle to come up. Viper feeling a little bit of pressure, maybe an opportunity to take out this military. Viper on the cusp of winning this game and winning his first game in the set. He just needs to deny this castle. Valesa is defending with all of his units right here, but Viper is steamrolling everything. We see the army count for Valesa. It's gonna be less than 10 soon. Oh, and more should go down, right? Villagers maybe can get that castle up. Now the knights are trying to focus this one down. 97%! Villagers last hammer! It doesn't matter, though. The knights are into the eco. The knights are into the eco, and the wave of units does not stop. Ooh, oh, on God. both sides, my friend! <laughs> Viper sees that one now, and all the villagers here in the town center in quite some problems. But the Viper, his economy is so good, he's fine if he loses 10, 15 builds. He is perfectly fine. He's got those eco upgrades in. He's got the TCs defending at home, and the knights are raiding. Here comes the cavalry right into the farming eco from Valesa. Valesa has nine on food right now and he needs to keep producing knights, but he's got all these enemies inside of his economy. I don't think it's going to work out for him. Viper almost has enough stone for another castle as well. He places it slightly further forward on a hill and man, it seems like nothing can stop the snake in this game. Controls more gold, controls more stone. Work efficiency has to be horrible here for Valesa. Look at that full traffic jam. There are like 15 workers trying to work on one single farm. And you see the sigh from him and Viper's got to be feeling some relief there. He does it, it the old way, the classic way, with Huns, with military spam and Castle Age. Beautiful performance there from Viper. The Castle Age engagement with those light cav was really unfortunate. Maybe he could have got more value from that. But ever since uh, he got, I think, that third stable up and just kept the production rolling, there, it seemed like there was nothing Valesa could do. This is a game that you should never rewatch if you want to learn this game. Because this is like... The perfect execution, everything aligned for the Viper. Yep. Scout production constantly. Then he had the perfect setup to go for two extra town centers, both eco upgrades, kept the night production alive, got for the monasteries. Like there was so much happening at the same time. If you want to learn this, you need to watch it on like quarter speed. There's no margin for error there. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely no margin for error, especially when he leaves parts of his base open and Valesa has those mobility units. Like how many times the, the scouts come in in Feudal Age under the TC? Knights came in from the left side, a bunch in Castle Age, right? He's protecting his monks. He's doing so many little things, and it feels like any other player at some point in that game is going to slip up, mm -hmm. and then they'll realize they have 10 villagers dead in their base, which he did at the end, yeah. but fortunately for him, it was past the point of mattering. Yeah, well, he at the same time killed 30 at the front, exactly. right? So, so he's like 30 <laughs> to 10, uh, I guess I'll take that <laughs> trade, you know? Great. That's that's really good for the set. Um, we are 2-1 Valesa still, and it's Valesa's map pick now for the first time here. Viper, though, with a pretty convincing win there in Castle Age. I don't think Valesa played that bad. No. I think it was just he ran up against the Huns, and when the Huns have all cylinders clicking there and the engine's running smoothly, it's really, really tough to stop them. Yeah, maybe a bit too many scout losses there. Maybe. End of Hulage, right? I think it was six against six scouts, and suddenly we arrive Castle Age with five scouts that could still get upgraded. Ooh, look at this matchup. I love this, dude. What is happening here? I heard you like guns. <laughs> Uh, we well got the gunpowder matchup, El Clasico here. We got the Turks against the Spanish. That's that's pretty sick. Spanish on this map. 
obviously Turks incredibly strong, right? We know Janissaries, one of the most efficient units in Castle Age. Crazy range, crazy damage output. We get the extra gold as well. Like, this civilization is beautiful. We see it so many times. Spanish, if we look at their tech tree and all their bonuses. It's really good. But no, but, but, but what, the eco, where is the eco? What, what is good here? The builder's working faster. If you're going for a forward castle, could be good. You're not going to hit the same Imperial Age transition that Turks are, though, because they get chemistry instantaneously. Mm -hmm. You don't get the light cav upgrade for free. There's a lot of things that they're missing, mm -hmm. but there are things that help them out on a closed-style map like this. You talked about their tech tree. Lots of versatility there mm -hmm. in their technology tree if you get your eco sorted. You also have a strong, unique unit. Kind of struggles against Janissaries if the Janissaries are behind the walls. Mm -hmm. You also have a decent monk tech tree if you want to be focused on some sort of push involving the relics, which we haven't really seen on this map as much. Um, they do have opportunities, but I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you. Turks should be favored here 100%. It has to be a play around Conquistadors and their mobility, right? This isn't our typical arena map. We are having way more ground to cover, way more spots to raid. Monks obviously could be a great addition here as well to get some conversion against Bombard Cannons. Not the greatest lumber camp here. Oh, oh. oh there is a hole okay. there. Okay, so that's not... That's but still, that's coast. traffic jam. Oh, no, yeah. no. But do we want to zoom in or not? Because I think that's, we should. That could be ugly. I think Valesa is going to position them perfect. Uh, if you no. position she, she, I think her the third one. Ah. on the other, she mm. needs to be on the other side of that. She needs to be well. on the other side. He's trying to figure it out. He's problem solving right now. That's that's like me in a group project. I like take something into my hands. And, and then, then you walk around. You're like, hey, guys, just go into the store. I'll be right back. And then I do minimal work till someone tells me to do a proper job. Okay. Remind me never to organize a tournament with you. <coughs> okay. Okay. Good job on NAC4, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so Viper, let's think tank this. You think it's going to be around the Conquistadors. You think he's going to be running around sniping Valesta's expansion. But the thing for me is, like, d do you need to expand here early in the game? Can't you just, don't you have enough room in your home base to go for an early Imperial push? As the Spanish, early Imperial as the, push? As, as the Turks. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm saying if Viper uh, okay. goes Conquistadors, mm -hmm. controls the map, don't mm -hmm. you have enough space to just kind of sit back with the Turks and then <sighs> push out? Okay, how good is your push out, though? If you have Janissaries, he will have the mobility, he will have the map vision, he will get relics potentially, and you're basically attacking into Hassar, and that's kind of it, right? If we get into a trash war, if gold gets limited, Turks have no chance at all against Spanish, simply because they have all the blacksmith upgrades and they can tech into halberdiers and elite skirmishes. Okay. So now you're on uh, now you're on the side of the Turks, and Viper's actually going to stone already here, nearly. Mm -hmm. So is this a... He clicks up with 23 villagers, so this is probably just a castle drop. Or save castle or castle drop? Uh, boom. Boom? Yeah. He okay. sells. He collected 10 gold. Meaning he will sell one. Ah, he's store. not on gold right now. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Pop 24, typically also stretching himself really thin. If he wanted to build a castle there, then would have some idle time. Economy would l look pretty shaky. I'm expecting a 3TC boom here from the Viper. But, yeah, he has two villages on stone. So with the castle follow-up there and we will try to contest the relics. But more around that 21-minute mark. So you're thinking two extra TCs? Three extra TCs. Two extra TCs into castle. Into castle. Yeah. Okay. Even with like 95 villagers, and you could have a lot of map control. Could then use um, your nice unique tech. Not only villagers stronger, but also conversions faster. Mm -hmm. Not really helping you out too much against Hussars, but helping you out a lot against the Bombard Cannons and Heavy CA or Janissaries if Villager wanted to go I for I just want to point out that we have seen a siege tower in this tournament. <laughs> we have seen flaming camels Elite in this war tournament. elephants. We have seen elite war elephants in this tournament. We have seen ballista elephants in this mm -hmm. tournament. We elite may berserks. see a missionary. We may see a missionary in this Can tournament. Can missionaries pick up relics by now? No, they can't. I Maybe you that. at one point should suggest it to the devs. I've been suggesting that for the last three years. Actually, no, probably more than three years. Yeah, you are just like we have a big uh, balance. We are in heavy discussion with the developers trying to make the game better, and they're so responsive. But yeah, Dave is writing there. It's monthly reminder. Missionaries I should think carry. I've, I think it's at least five messages. <laughs> I, it's like every six months. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, market and stable. So Willis actually will contest the relics here. Still two on gold. So Viper, if he has the delayed castle, he might actually run into the scenario where only two relics could even be contested by him. Yep, getting the farm upgrade, getting double bid axe now. Vilesa is on the way to the castle age here with 28 population. Viper is going to be a minute ahead of him. And you suspect it's going to be the double TC approach. That's what it looks like currently. 12 on wood, nothing on gold. Still keeps three on stone, which is a bit surprising to me. I think he will have some idle time, right? Because right now he has 10 on food, but soon he needs to farm. So that's minus wood. He wants to build double town center. That's a lot of minus wood. So he needs to heavily stay on wood here for sure. And then that means not a lot of villagers can actually get food to really work for the income there for the three town centers. Yeah, it's interesting because you kind of want to get Bosa here too. Mm -hmm. It's interesting leaving those villagers on the stone, but maybe maybe it's just like an additional TC and then you add more vills on the stone and you go castle forward with two TCs? Doesn't feel like the most consistent play, right? Especially if the opponent already has light cap out on the field, you're right? missing your timing on it, too. You, you, you can't get to the other side of the map. Interesting. Like, Phyllis knows exactly that he will have the map control and that he basically forces the defensive castle. And there's the second TC, there's Bosa, and obviously he's lacking the wood to go for that third one, but he should have it shortly. So he's not going to be too far behind. Viper's opponents have banned Hippo Arena five out of seven sets so far. So it's the most banned map against him. I mean, why not, right? He's probably the best arena player in the history of the game. He's won Masters of Arena how many times? I, I'm, I'm still surprised. This is a seven set. How did the band five out of seven sets? Right, he played seven five sets. He five played five, five and then he played yesterday. the sixth one yesterday, and then he played this is the seventh one. Yeah, but it's not banned. <laughs> we are playing the map. No, I know. Five out of seven sets. Ah! What are you? Ah, brain fart. <clears throat> okay, five out of seven <laughs> sets. But obviously, Willis uh, uh, lost that map and had it very often at his home map. So. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Scout still faster than the light cap here. Nothing happened. What did you teach in your class, by the way, when you were a teacher? I couldn't. I can't remember what subject. I don't remember what subject I taught when I was a math teacher. Okay. <coughs> Neither do your students. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm little people. Okay. We o we only worked in like s numbers six and below. Number six and below. Okay. Monastery. Wants Unless that's the first one to the monastery. Wants to pick up the relics, only two light cap, and then stop production. Obviously, a heavier investment into the light cap would not have worked out at all. 3TC for the Viper should get a reasonable advantage, but 3TC for Villisse as well. Ben Viper, only 11 on food. That should be some more idle TC time there that I'm fearing. Yeah, Viper is kind of struggling here, and you can see that idle TC time just taking up and up and up there. Valesa. Still not too far uh, ahead in terms of economy right now. Viper's actually got the villager lead because of the slower castle age time there from Valesa. But he does have the light cap patrolling around the map, and he is going to be the first person to snag those relics. Let's take a look at his, his exploration. He's just, like, looking around. Oh, he's got the smiley face. <laughs> oh, dude, don't explore the bottom. Don't explore the <laughs> bottom. Don't explore the bottom. Um... A call from future Nilly. Mm -hmm. This build out that Viper is doing is something we won't see anymore. Because with having constantly three or four on stone, he's constantly having floating resources that he can't use. Yeah. I think the build out of the future will actually be stay fully on food and wood and then and make then a massive 12 village on yeah. stone switch. Right? Yeah. Because those are 500 dead resources for a very long time already. And I think we saw that kind of when we first switched these nine villager starts, especially with the arena tournaments, right? Like players would play all in on food and wood, whereas, and then they'd shift 12 villagers to stone to get that mm -hmm. castle. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. they had a super tight up time. See, toe build, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But like, the, used to be where you would put the villagers on stone in Dark Age. And then you would just slow build up to that because it felt like you were making a nice transition. It felt good yeah. to see you get that amount exactly when you needed it. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily make sense if you want to hit those timings. 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I think people might rethink that. And it's just a very recent message that I got. Nearly, what about that? There was a Reddit thread about it as well, and it made hell of a lot of sense. Okay, here's the castle for Viper. Valesa does not see that. He's just patrolling back and forth uh, beside that bear. But since it's not a villager, bear don't care. He's going to watch that light cap fade away into the darkness. Fourth TC now from Valesa on that forward gold, and Viper's trying to save his scout. His scout is faster. 0 0.05 speed faster. 0 0.05. 155, 165. Oh, 0.05. Oh, man. Mm. And that's the yeah. number below six. Wait, he's got husbandry. Valesa has husbandry. Ah. So that's but typically 1.5. Yeah, oh, 1. so you were correct. Or, yeah, yeah. In the past, you were correct. In the past, I was correct. Future Dave is calling and telling me that he has husbandry, however. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first relic already in there. Second relic on the way. Very likely that he will get the others here. Two still at the bottom, one in the right ear of the hippo. And Kongs, what would they really achieve? Yeah, they will push some light calf away, but all the relics are gone by then. Mm -hmm. Just what is the end game here for Viper? What is the end game? And speaking of end game, like you said, right. if we ever get to a situation where we're fully pop capped mm -hmm. and it's like even on middle control, the Spanish should be in a pretty good position against the Turks. But it's just like, do we ever get there? Viper moves to the top. That will be a 40 C play from him. Pro pretty much impossible is to scout for Villisa. Does he not know that? That there's the gold? No, Viper knows. He should know. Viper knows about that gold. There's always a gold up there ah, in that area. He didn't but scout it's, it just, it's just where is it going to specifically be? And he goes for that outpost. He had the stone to spend. Spanish villagers build quickly, and he's going to get some vision on that. Valesa still doesn't see the villagers up there, and the conquistadors are already out, and they're ready to do damage. Valesa has two relics in so far. He's trying to get a third. Viper tracking that. Let's and there's see. the third one right there, so he's trying to get a fourth. Conversion still locked in. If you want to dive, that should be an easy conversion from the monk at the bottom. Viper, oh, that's really fortunate for him. Yep. But oh, he can switch. He, he can, can switch, switch now. No, be easy. Viper, you never go back there, I think. Uh, he will punish at least one monk, but yeah, one Kong lost. Second monk should have a lot of juice as well. He doesn't hit! Hit your shots! He got it. Still conversion locked in. This could be another conversion. Yeah, very likely. And that means like minus three conquistadors already. Yeah, and that's like, that's something you have to be aware of when you're playing against these monks here. They will keep that conversion locked in and players won't task them away until the unit is really, really far afield. So that's an interesting decision there from Viper to dip back in with the conks to try to get greedy against that monk. Heavy CA is the play here for Villisa, but Viper will have all the map control in the world. Map control only in the sense, though, that he will get the extra gold, extra stone, not that he has the relic advantage. Monastery relatively exposed, but I think Villisa will save those. Viper, he will play massive economy. Wouldn't be surprised if he only clicks up at like 110 villagers. You know, I do like the outpost. He's tracking whether Valesa is going to extend out to that area. Yeah. So it's he's getting a lot of information. He's kind of controlling the stuff at the bottom of this arena. But Valesa is going to hit Imperial Age with a pretty good time here. And he's building up the Cav Archers, which we know with Turks can be very, very strong. This far? No upgrades, though. Husbandry, yeah, Ballistics coming in as well. But we can see Archer range not be really being used, only now Bloodlines as well. And it just feels like Viper. He can't be too unhappy with the situation here, but... It's not the massive advantage that he was hoping for with Conquistadors, potentially. Oh, that's a shame, the 1v1 conk battle. If you're low on HP in a 1v1 conk battle, you want to get as far away from possible as possible oh, and yeah. hope you hit your shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they want to get as close as possible <laughs> <laughs> to hit the shots. So that's exactly what went on there. Valesa has a lot of text to get here for the Heavy Cav Archers. It's a slow transition. There's so much stuff you need. Um, to research. He's still a minute away from Imperial Age, though, and he's already got eight of them with seven in the queue, so he might hit that timing quite nicely. Viper will play Mess Kongs in Imperial Age. That's so interesting, isn't it? Look at his resources. He's doing a really good job of keeping the low. Actually, that yeah. goes for both players. Mong is still trying to find some conversions. Viper, he needs to go further away. Uh oh, conversion still locked in. Conversion That's not locked in, but they're not fast enough. The Kongs are going to get away. Valesa is not clicking those monks. 
into any different directions. Viper has a castle to retreat to, though, and Viper now gets husbandry. Surprised he didn't have that earlier, actually, with the engagements he's tried to take. The conversions are not locked in from before, so Viper can get away from this, especially if he can hop into that castle, drag the monks into the fire. His economy behind this is pretty solid. I mean, he's had less settled TC time than Valesa, as Valesa now goes, goes for two siege workshops at the front. And he still has 12 conks, which are a pretty powerful option. However, cav archers have ballistics, they're getting bracer, and they will hit their shots, whereas the conks are not as consistent. Viper needs to add another unit, I believe. I think against mass monks, he mass heavy CA, conks don't excite me too much. Either we need to go into some elite skirmishers here or add some monks ourselves. So far, Viper decides for neither option. He goes for the upgrade for his calf. Is he trying to mix in some hussars? Hmm, interesting. You get some sort of meat unit in front to take out the siege, and then you have the conch stealing damage behind. But the siege should be sitting behind as well, so I think this should be a long distance fight. I think skirmishes would have felt a bit more natural to me. Final armor upgrade coming from these Kongs. And once you get the elite version of the Conquistador with the armor upgrades, if you have them unmasked, they're pretty tanky and they're pretty tough to take out as Viper Mike goes away from those shots. Just feels like they're so hard to mask, right? They cost food, they cost gold, the upgrades are expensive, whereas these Cav Archers would gold eco and you can spend your food on getting the techs for them. Might have found a Bombard Cannon out of position though. Like Viper can kill this. Maybe even the trap, one Bombard Cannon oh! survives, barely sends one Kong nice. over, hits a shot. And he's gonna find another one too. Big value early, Valesa really wants to hit this timing to have those Bomber Cannons out and that's a lot of value lost. Immediately an Imperial Age for trading maybe three Conquistadors, I think that's worth it for sure. Elite Conquistadors so quickly. Oh, he could lose all of them though. I think they are pretty much out of position. Ballistics, Heavy CA chasing this one down. Sipahi already on those Heavy CA, but he doesn't send all of them. No, he sent half of his army to the north to protect that one Treb. He's nervous now. He doesn't know what's coming from Viper, and Viper deletes the wall. He's going to get away with at least some in time for that Elite Conk upgrade to come in. Supremacy also making its way into this game. <laughs> what are we seeing? Super strong villagers here. Those CA, they don't want to fight before they get heavy CA. Now they have the upgrade. Last armor upgrade still waiting for them. That's actually only the second armor upgrade. Viper is still dancing, but the main story might be the castle in the center. I would also like to see Herbal Medicine here from Viper to heal up those conks in mm -hmm. the castle. I think that would be a very valuable tech. We've got lots of wood in the bank from Viper. We've got 51 on food, so the economy from him is super nice if he can hold. And it looks like he's clearing up the Cav Archers in the south. It's all about this castle, though. Can he hold this position? He's got only 200 stone left in the bank. He's diving in here with the conks. If the Cav Archers get too far away from that Bomber Kenny, he could snipe it. But there's still monks to defend, and Viper hasn't completed the tech switch into those light cap just yet. Only three castles for production. If that castle goes down, that would be a massive hole in the armor of Viper here. Conk number simply not high enough, but those CA quite ambitious under the castle. Yeah, we've got more conks still alive here. Nearly the CA have a ton of HP, though. And they are going to be pushing this back. Viper is forced to abandon that castle. He is housed right now. He's going to need to cut the production. He still has some conquistadors left. And his villagers are going to be tough to kill as he thought about sending them in for those bomber cannons, I think, with supremacy. <laughs> well, tanking a bit. Conquistadors are now moving in. Damage output, obviously, pretty nice if they hit their shot. Only now fletching. That's why the castle didn't find too many kills early on. I think you could almost delete like that wall if you're Viper and go and kill those bomber cannons with the villagers. And he's sending the boys and the girls here. Supremacy. We were asking what his unit is going to be in front of these conquistadors. It's just going to be villagers as he doesn't have enough light cab mass to send them in. The villagers are going to die, though, on the way over to these bomber cannons. They will push them back. Cav Archer's still going down, but there's just not the Conquistador mass that we need, and he's only producing out of two castles. Heavy CA production still looks really, really solid. 19 more in the queue, and this amount of gold and food could even tag into Hassas. The economy set up for Velissa, beautiful behind this. Viper with 132 villagers, Velissa with 131, and Velissa takes game four there. He's up 3-1. We have to question that strategy from Viper. It looked like for a minute... If he could just stall that out, maybe kill those other two bomber cannons, he'd have time to mass. But the cav archer approach from the Turks is just too strong. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and that's what you said early on, right? You saw Turks being the better civilization here, just the typical answers there uh, with a chance to go for heavy CA, massive amount of upgrades. And we questioned two civilization choices. We were hoping that Viper comes up with a strategy that we didn't think of, that he could surprise us, that he could surprise Willis with. And Japanese and Spanish sadly couldn't deliver yet. They haven't panned out yet. They have not panned out yet. And yet, when he went for the tried and true and tested method with the Huns, it did work. So maybe he needs to just go back to basics. Yeah, back to that's what you said, yeah. Coach Dave. Yeah. On the case, he's, you said early on, just play meta, just play the standard s strategy that everyone knows, but you executed so perfectly. And we saw that from Hans, and maybe we can see that a bit more. If we look at the shift draft, though, there are some civilizations where I can see absolute clean openings and approaches. Chinese, on enclosed. Viper can easily go for that. Then we see at six, maybe on fortified clearing, play a wild game. Tatars on outcrop. I see strategies that are pretty straightforward here that could work for the Viper. Mm -hmm. And there's only three maps remaining for him to pick. He's going to have to win three games in a row to bring himself back into this. If he does, it's the beginning of an, a or just the middle of an absolutely wild comeback story for him in this tournament. Um, but right now it looks like Valesa is just playing too consistent, mm -hmm. too strong mm -hmm. uh, to match up against these kind of unorthodox strategies from Viper. Where do we go here? Do we go to Fortify Clearing? That would be a very Viper-like pick to pick his opponent's home map. Mm -hmm. Wanted to squeeze in Spanish there. I still believe that on close and just playing Chinese feels like a very natural choice for him. Mm -hmm. Just play a pure meta game. Nothing fancy and see how you match up. And we're going to enclose and it's going to be Chinese. So you were correct, Nilly. And Valesa is going to pick the Hindustanis. Remember, the Hindustanis are 1 in 10. And mm -hmm. Valesa is the only person that has won with us <laughs> at this tournament. Okay. Chinese, I think, have a really good win rate. Still, I think they played like nine times, one six or, or something like that. So absolutely reasonable. And we are picking Chinese here because obviously we have three extra villagers. But we're starting with very little food. In this game mode, it's actually minus 100 food in your bank mm -hmm. that you're starting with. And therefore, you want to get that food in nice and quickly. The elephants here that are rhinos are really close to your town center. And that's why you get the food in so quickly. Yeah, and... That's why people are picking them on this map. Also, the cheaper technology is coming into play, so it's really a sieve. You just want to stall it. You want to get those cheaper techs, and you want to mass into a pretty versatile army in the later stages of the game. Hindustanis on the other side for Valesa. We have the villagers costing less, which really benefits their eco. Also, a ton of different options they can go for. They can go for the camel play. They can go for a cav archer play we've seen occasionally. They can go for the ghulam, their unique unit, if you're against archers. And then, of course, the gunpowder later on in, in Imperial Age is pretty impressive from them. Viper did play this against Jordan. I don't know if you remember that game. But it was, it was an amazing display from him. I think he didn't let Jordan pass the middle of the map once. And it was just like 3TC booming behind. And at some point, he didn't even do eco damage. And Jordan just tapped out because he knew he had lost already. I think it was Chinese against Mayans there, yep. right? Jordan yep. And Jordan went for a lot of aggression. But Viper just looked so incredibly smooth. Got on to all his army and kept the macro alive. Kind of what we saw on Graveyards is what we want to see from him here. Obviously back against the wall. Leary waiting for the winner of those two in a best of nine tomorrow. So what should the strategy be here from Valesa? Is he going to open scouts or is he going to open archer range? I think scouts just feels so natural on this one. So one would love to see that and then take it from there, right? Because you still feel if we get to Imperial Camels, this should still be pretty good for Hindustani. So a super long game, With something he shouldn't shy away from. Uh, uh. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And we don't usually see frustration on the face of Valesa. But I <laughs> on <little> e <laughs> oh, and it's going there, back! And it's going back. He can shoot it once with the villager, but it's still up against the wood line. And look uh. at him! Look at him! Oh no! Let's work here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just Age of Empires oh. things. The wildlife is not behaving. No, oh, and that has to be satisfying. And look at behind this, actually, an idle villager next to the house. Mm -hmm. And that one was built quite some time ago. 
That is, oh man, that is one of the most frustrating things because you want a super clean build odor, right? Yeah. You don't want anything to go wrong. The last thing you expect is a deer trolling you <laughs> up against the wood line. Yeah, and that's why he was so late scouting mm -hmm. and actually eats three hits already and only dealt one. Yeah, and Viper is going to be in the Feudal Age at exactly the same time. So Viper stays on this scout from Valesa. Look, Valesa wants to bait him in because he thinks he might even be faster than him. So he's keeping him nearby in anticipation of that Feudal Age coming in. And then they're both going to hit at the same time. He's going to be like, oh. And then he runs this, away again. Yeah, right? this didn't he, work. he wants to take the fight. Uh, oh, uh, he took one extra hit, but he was already too far behind. Now he's trying to constantly click, realizes, okay, he's low on HP and has to run stable his play. Stable approach, and now Viper is going to win that 1v1 scout war all because of a deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, actually. Oh, oh no, 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 Viper, did he shift? Okay, okay. Whew. We well, thought what, he what misclicked there? there a little bit. I don't know. It looked like they became foragers, so he was like accidentally tried to shift click mm -hmm. them afterwards, but didn't hold shift. Interesting times as Valesa tries to search for a hill. Usually you won't get the hill hit, especially against a player like Viper. And Viper actually let him get it to try and go up on the elevation. That is very surprising for me. Viper should have just pulled away there, but now they do the dance. 18 versus 18 HP. Nice one by Villasa. Anticipated exactly Viper's move that he wanted to overtake and then do the hit from the hill himself. And both players going for the eco upgrades, going for the stables. Relatively even game. Well, it says one and two on Hindustanis in the main event. He beat Yo with them on Hippo Arena and lost to Hera on Frigid Lake and Leary on Outcrop. Okay. Interesting. What a lineup Villas had, right? I know. <laughs> he had, he had, I think he had the toughest enemies of them all. Viper, Hera, Leary, Leary Yo. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Viper's <laughs> run, like Villas' yeah. run is god tier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. he were to win this tournament, that would be wild. Scout still trading off some hits. Spearman now going forward. Love to see that. Some aggression forces maybe Spearman out of Villas, but so far, scouts only. Okay, scouts tracking the scout from Villas, and it looks like he is in a position to be cleared up here. Just one more hit. You don't even want to get that second one involved. It's just going to bump up against him. Viper also with a Spearman forward. And it seems like Valesa never got an opportunity ever since that late deer push to get any forward pressure against Viper, as Viper doesn't even get the final hit uh, against that scout. Now he's the one running away. Two super uh, low HP ones tries he's to gonna, maybe block this. He's going to wait and turn around and try and snap that immediate turnaround as soon as he is, his friend joins him. Also the Spearman coming from the north looking for opportunities. He's going to be a little bit too slow, and it's just back and forth in the middle of the map yet again. In this series. Three on gold. Viper will add some archers. So this will be scout, archer, aggression. Distance obviously really long. That's why people sometimes try to skip the archer range there. Scouts. A little bit surrounded here from Valesa. And Viper manages to run in and Ooh. pick two of those without losing his scout. Hello. Gets more hits in as well. Double Spearman against only one Spearman. Good one for the Viper. Yeah, he's got a scout that's two hits away from death, though. So he needs to be very, very careful. He pulls that forward and blocks with the remaining two. Also two Spearmen. Chasing from behind. It doesn't seem like that important of a fight right now, but when you're adding units, archers behind this, all of these scouts matter, especially for keeping your opponent on their side of the map. There's uh, only two spearmen stopped production of those now, only now on gold. Archer production will be way later. He doesn't have a range. He goes for the blacksmith first. Is he thinking about casting this? This would be greedy. This Viper could be punish so this. Greedy. Especially since Viper already has an archer out and another one in the queue. And also does not produce spearmen, meaning that he could go for some more aggression and tries to get over there while Velissa can't really intercept. I think he also lost the scout. I think Viper picked another scout. He did, so he's going to be harassing the gold too. This is a very dangerous situation for the Finn as Viper has spearmen now in defense and he's coming forward with archers and a spearman to support and he knows exactly where the scouts are from Valesa. I think Valesa was just too late there to the archer range. Yeah, feels like it. And now the blacksmith as well. That could be fletching archers. Has three archers. Is he continuing to produce? Yes, he is. Tries to poke a bit on the gold. Squeezes through there. Lots of damage output. And that looks like it's a dead villager 100% of the time. Viper's just going to wait around. He takes a couple hits but saves the scout. And he hasn't taken any damage at home, and his archers are already on the way over with Fletching coming in. Viper capitalizing on uh, the late archer range from Valesa here, and he's already putting in work. 
And Willisse, he knows, I don't have enough time to catch up with the Archer production. Skirmishes, the counter to the Archers, plus they produce faster. So that's his unit choice, but obviously scales way worse once we get to Castle. And he might feel like he needs to run away at some point, because he's already getting wheelbarrow. That's a super quick wheelbarrow timing. Is that really, reason really because cool. he thinks he needs to run away? I, or, or it's just, I, I don't know, he's under stress or something? Like he, he was out of position, Dave. Oh, ba big hits! Those scrums are dead! Skirms are almost dead, and the Spearman was a little bit idle there. Viper running into the Skirmishers. The Skirmishers don't have any armor yet. They don't even have fletching. Viper is looking for value against them. He's trying to not to get poked by the Spearman, trying to micro down that Spearman from behind, and now there's no Spearman at all in this fight. It's coming from the north right now as Viper is trying to micro down these Skirmishers, but the Scouts are coming home. Spearman still doing some damage against the scouts, more skirms in danger, and Willis, he needs to invest a lot, their work efficiency has to be going down quite a bit. Now also villagers on Barry's idol, that was quite a defense here from Willis, though. Gets out of there with not too many losses, but it was, me was messy. Yeah, you can see the resources collected starting to add up, though. Lots of idle time here for Valesa. That was great also from Viper to just snag that one last Spearman. Yeah, He's yeah. like, how can I get maximum value from this? I'm going to run my scout around, body block with the archer, get the kill that I can, and then I'm going to send five more archers back across the map, and I'm clicking up the castle age before you are, even though I went for the range first. And this is the stable standard game that we wanted to see from Viper, that you said he should excel at. Oh, the scout missed those. Miss How do they? They always miss the army on this map. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you always scout on the other side of the rocky terrain because yeah. you think they're going to be sneaky. Yeah. But the sneakiest play is hugging the edge. And it's like 100% of the game's consistent. You miss that army. Yeah, Pippin style there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the closer you are to danger, the farther you are from harm. Mm. And we know Viper is He's a big small. Lord of the Rings fan. And you are really small. And, uh, yep. <coughs> Five archers here. Still trying to save those, not really trying to poke too much. Maybe wants to go for the crossbow plus Botkin timing. And those villagers, they are looking for an extra town center. Looking for an extra town center indeed. I didn't appreciate that, by the way. It wasn't very nice. You're not that much taller than me. Twitcher doesn't know. You're like, you're <laughs> like two <laughs> inches taller than me, bro. If that. I once heard two inches matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Castle Age, does 10, 15 seconds matter for Castle Age? I heard That's the difference here. 10 seconds can matter a lot. <laughs> can be 10 beautiful seconds. 10 Dave. wonderful magical seconds, mm -hmm. exactly. And it uh, looks like Viper is going to use those 10 seconds to come in from the back. So here he comes towards this mill from Valesa. And is he going to wait for his upgrades? It looks like he's planning on doing so. Yeah. And, well, how can you really scout that? Pretty much impossible. Still has the skirms next to his gold. Knows that an attack is not impossible there. Runs away at that end, but the two villagers at the berries way too exposed. Leave Dave alone, German Donny Wahlberg. I agree <laughs> with that donation. Thank you guys for continuing the support here mm. for NAC4. Look at Valesa knows there's armies coming from somewhere, right? He has that game sense. He's been wide open um, for a while now. And he's got the skirmishers patrolling with elite skirm coming in. But Viper gets crossbow and he still has that army at the back. So maybe he's going to wait for Valesa to either dive on this one or the one along the wood line and then try and run in at the same time and snipe villagers. At the main base. Right, he's kind of getting trapped there. Is he willing to go there? House for the defense? No, it's Skirm be Skirm. Elite Skirm tech now. Villisa kind of gives up map control with that. I kind of want these armies to meet up, though. With camels on the field, I kind of want the armies. They're just too small. Maybe the one on the right is enough, but the one at the top can be taken out with a few skirmishers and that camel involved. Viper still microing, though. Still adding in crossbows behind and going for immediately two extra TCs. Tries to combine forces, yeah, and that kind of reminds me of the Hans game, right? Instantly 3 TC plus both eco upgrades. Yep. Feels lovely for him. Plus two armor, though, for the skirms yeah. from Valesa. So I think Viper's got to realize he needs to mix something else in. He's got one knight there, two more knights on the field, although I think they're coming forward right now. Can't immediately be of use. And uh, Viper's going to have to wait for those to arrive to do damage. But still, if you're in Valesa's position, you kind of feel like you know Viper's pulling ahead economically. Mm -hmm. And you have that pressure in the back of your head to do damage. Viper dances here against plus two, plus two skirms. Quite interesting. Goes in with the knights, but the knights only with bloodlines. No armor on those. 
Viper not getting hit by a single volley from the scrim. As I say that, he gets <laughs> hit by a single volley from the scrims and loses another crossbow. But he's trying to get close, trying to bait Valesa into stopping so that his knights can do damage. And once the scrims are gone, then he can work away on the camels. Perfectly fine with these crossbows. And it's Viper who's pushing back. Valesa goes for that monastery. Camels are looking for an opportunity here. It is surprising that Viper is being so aggressive against skirmishers with plus two armor. And only three knights, right? That's really the shocking thing. Now goes back behind this, already thinking about the relics, first one in his hands and coming home. It's crazy. When we have these little fights here, we're thinking Viper, he, he's just executing so well. He's taking all these battles so well. He's adding economy so well behind it. We asked that question again, like, do you need to go for the ver wide variety of strats if you can play like this? However, saying that Valesa is a beast, right? He got that plus two at perfect time, lead skirm at perfect time. He didn't take the damage from the army in the back, and he's arguably got the better late game civilization over the Chinese. So if he plays into that, could really work out well for him. Did you see Warlord's finals? I did. How was Viper's approach there? Because that was his last big S tier win. Uh, there was nothing. Was there was nothing era. overly creative, except maybe like the Bengali's game on Arena. But it was a solid approach. It was just a really solid approach. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Obviously, yeah. had a lot of time to think about himself first. Wasn't feeling 100% there physically and maybe couldn't think about strategies and think every matchup through while Villisa, his brain never stops thinking about Age of Empires and just preparing for the sets. He did win TTL, by the way, as well. Piper did. Oh. Nilly was busy organizing. Nil Nil Oops, Nilly, yeah. Nilly was busy organizing. The tournament ended after I was demoted to Nilly was busy organizing. Yeah, exactly. Mm. These, uh, he's a silver player. Uh, we'll be in the qualifying rounds next time around, along with our boy T90 official. Do you think he will try to qualify again? Um, <laughs> <laughs> emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big army coming from Valesa, but Viper has completely switched up the sides. Fourth TC for Viper added a while ago, and we can see that reflected in the villager count here. Ballistics coming in. Army at the left-hand side. Not really finding too much. Skirm's already there. One Monk for the defense as well. Don't really think Viper will find too much. And three Relics at the left-hand side. Potentially still to be picked off. Feels like Viper maybe getting three. Villisa getting two. Could be a reasonable prediction. Mm -hmm. It's so tough for Valesa to come forward with this army here from Viper. Like, you want to do damage on the other side, but it's so, so difficult because if you overextend by accident with those skirms, hmm. the knights can jump on them. Once the skirms aren't there, the camels and the monks aren't feeling very good against these crossbows at all. And that's what you see, right? Skirm unprotected. Now both running for that relic. Maybe Ooh, even Viper gets position. four of them. And that army? Yeah, scary against other army, but not really scary when it comes to killing villagers. I love that outpost so much. Mm -hmm. It's such a little thing, but it's so beautiful because that just... And Viper comes forward just to get the relic. <laughs> and <laughs> goes back the out. most Viper moment I've ever yeah. seen in my But that's the life. methodical play that yeah. we want to see from him. Yeah. Right, and here the knight goes in, sees the camels are coming over, yeah. bought himself another five seconds, and that means the defense will be easier. Valesa, though, has pushed forward with this army, and Viper is going to struggle against the plus two armor skirmishers, and Valesa is adding a fourth TC behind, and that's the methodical play we want to see from him. Mm -hmm. and that's what makes him so dangerous and so consistent. Also, eco upgrades for Valesa looking really nice here. He just got hand cart before a Chinese player, so that's beautiful. Does not have a heavy plow but still a formidable economy behind. However, he is about 20 villagers behind this name. That's really crazy, right? How good Viper was adding his sound centers there. Now the knights are diving. Monk instantly got sniped down. Crossbow count not that high to deal with those camels. Yeah, the camels are doing work against the knights, but the knights are clearing up the skirmishers, and now Viper brings his force back, and he can defend here. He's also going for a castle on the other side. At the same time, Valesa pushes forward, but it's only skirms, and it looks like, <laughs> come on, buddy. Come on, man. You can outrun it. The skirms are bumping into each other. He's got ballistics, and the man dives forward, and the relic gets dropped off to the right under the range of that castle if it gets built, though, so he should be able to bring in that relic eventually. Adding way more farms here, trying to set himself up for the long game. And this could indeed be a long game. Mangano pops here, both shots completely missing. 
Yeah, didn't quite have the angle there. I mean, a little bit of damage. Viper's trying to chip away at those monks that they turned around. Alessa, though, hugging the edge. He's going to get out of dodge, and Viper will be completely defended on this side. Can afford to focus all of his attention over on the right side, or indeed at that relic, which I know is super important to him. <laughs> and uh, he is going to be in a pretty good position here. Lots of gold in the bank. Doesn't quite have the food just yet, so a little bit of imbalance in Viper's eco setup currently. Yeah, sometimes you see people having the higher farm count. 40 on food, though, not too bad at all. 35 on gold, though. That's, that's a lot. That's the high number, right? Plus, obviously, soon for relics helping him out quite a bit as well. Didn't really continue with more monk production. Otherwise, maybe could have kept that gold count a bit lower. Wouldn't be super surprised to see a market from him. Mm -hmm. KD also remarkably even this game. I'm surprised. I thought it would be in favor of Viper, but... Uh, Valesa making it work, and also he's just holding long enough to keep this army away from his economy as he expands. So Valesa is going and adding more production buildings behind this. Are those actually stables? I'm looking at the buildings he's placing in his base. There are there are archer ranges, nearly. Ooh, goes for more elite skirms, or is heavy CA play ever or heavy calf archer play? ever an option for him would really surprise me i think he just tries to defend with skirms viper soon enough stone there's just like sense on it how on what earth the castle? do we have this this game right <laughs> where they're fighting back and forth they have different army compositions there there's a large disparity in bills and they're up to imperial age at exactly the same time how are we so consistent with this this is massive right it's crazy that's just like how you see like if both players can play the metro game it is really tough to find out who is the better player, right? Because they are both keeping their TCs alive, getting the upgrades, also trying to raid, trying to stay active. Yep. And behind this, they realize, okay, this is the short moment where we actually can take the foot off the gas a bit because de dealing damage right now is not really an option. The eco setup for both of them is kind of wild, too. Like, Valesa has 50 on, on food. Viper had 57, I believe, before he had to garrison these villagers. And then you look at their gold counts too, like Viper floating 1,200 gold, Valesa with 800. They have more than enough to get their technologies when they get up to Imperial Age. And Viper already stretching out for that castle on the right side. It's a little bit aggressive, but it's 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 aggressively defensive. <laughs> I think he wanted to build it a bit further forward, but only one villager there, so maybe that was never really the plan. Am, am I crazy? Thinking that Bomber's t Bomber Towers could be nice here? I think Bomber Towers could. There's a lot of stone available on this map, right? Especially if you want to lock down one side. Mm -hmm. Or if you push forward and then you want to hold that position that you've pushed to. Um, and then switch over to the other side. Bomber Towers could be a big play. Valesa sending a lot of villagers forward. Viper, though, coming in with the Knights here. This is a risk. This is a risk. He could get converted or the Camels could be hanging around here. He doesn't know where the army is from Valesa just yet. Interesting that Villisa tries to move out that far there. Doesn't have the greatest vision, right? Yeah, he just saw the army at the right-hand side. He's sending his army behind this, but still. Viper will see that, right? Could go into a trap war. Look at the resource of the Viper. Viper sees the castle. He's got so much res, bro. He gets Arbalest, Thumb. Oh, my <laughs> God. He gets Arbalest, Thumb Ring, Bracer, Handcart, Cavalier, Heavy Camel. He's getting everything, really using the cheaper technologies <laughs> from the Chinese. <laughs> Oh. oh, baby, Viper just wants to go for <laughs> all the options here. They asked him what he wanted on the menu. He just said yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just one more bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the camel here, they could maybe even find some damage. That 73 HP crossbow numbers look pretty solid. Uh oh, it's what's that castle at? What's that castle at? It's at 87%. That thing's not going up. That thing is toast. And Valesa is denied off the castle. He does get the castle up on the left side of Viper's base, but Viper has extended to this complete bottom side and right side of the map, so he should be fine. Viper is now raiding in here. The Cavalier tech is going to come in soon. The Camel tech, the final armor tech, forging, conscription, chemistry. He keeps ordering, Millie. He just keeps ordering things off the Chinese tech tree. It is wild. No outpost there for Willis. It was the big problem. Didn't really know where the army was and if it was diving or not. And now those upgrades are kicking in. We're now going for forging as well. And that is he even in danger. Yeah, and if he sends a couple cavalier, he can even get into the uh, the farm eco on the inside oh, yeah. from Valesse. He's got that final armor. Doesn't really need to worry about the TC fire just yet. Getting the secondary armor even for his range units. And he's still, he has 73 on food right now. Viper's economy is cracked. 
Oh god, and that skirmish is no doing good clear up here against all those Arbalest. But meanwhile, the Camels lost the fight against the Cavaliers. The rain is coming in here as well. Vanessa struggles to keep his population high. And it all happened in a split second. It all happened in a split second for Vanessa. He was playing so well, but Viper just hit that transition. And it has been wild here. The mi military pushing forward. Valesa finally with heavy camel. We know how devastating the camels from Indus Sandys can be. But he's only got four. And he's only got three in the queue. Right now, his army is entirely skirmishers. That's not going to work against the heavy camels with the final armor, let alone the cavalier. Oh god, those skirmishers chasing down the Arbalest, though, still forcing so much. At the time, the castle will go up eventually. Now the next steps of the Viper has to be initiated though. He needs to go for some traps or some siege to profit on that map control. But look at that, traps already working away. Traps working on the castle. Cavalier can clear up the trebuchet behind that. And Viper is even sitting on the gold here from Valesa. And Valesa taps out. What a dominant performance as soon as he hit Imp. He just put his foot down on the gas, and it seemed like Valesa didn't have a chance. Yeah, it's like everything lined up perfectly there as well. And... Hi, yeah, yeah, you have to love it here for the Viper, who did exactly what we wanted to see, right? The mm. clean game, straightforward, just your typical crossbow and cavalry composition. And it was a beautiful game, but yep. the Viper came out ahead. I would love to see his point of view when he hit, hit imp. imp. Yeah. Because like he probably cycled through eight different buildings and just like click, 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 click. click, click, click yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That would oh. have been wild, man. Holy. Early in there, out of the Viper's POV. And it, it's, it's a shame for Valesa, because I think he start, it started off tough for him, right? Obviously, the archer range timing was a little yeah, bit off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The deer at the beginning actually, I think, mattered more <laughs> than we were saying. And uh, he recovered quite well, mm -hmm. honestly. And he kept Viper at bay that entire castle age time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, it had to be just surprising, the amount of units that flooded into his base and how fast the upgrades came in. I have to love it. Two more maps for the Viper to win if he wants that spot in the semifinals against Leary tomorrow. Valesa only needs one more win. Fortified clearing. If we think about civilizations there, Burmese certainly an option. We could see Berbers if we want to go for some shenanigans when it comes to counterattacks. Viper still with his pick number one. Aztecs, the unsniped civilization, certainly a solid option on outcrop and fortified clearing alike. I'm not really sure where we want to play it. It feels like they are slightly better on outcrop. But then my big question, what are we playing on Fortified Clearing? Tatars does not feel great to me. Yeah, that's really tough. Viper's got three civilizations remaining. I really like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tatars is not, is not bad on outcrop, outcrop. right? They had to be really played on outcrop. And then Aztecs is not Fortified a terrible clearing. option for Fortified Clearing would be extremely survive surprised with uh, Dravidians. Yeah, there. Dravidians just feel really yeah. bad on either thing there. Tato gives a, full, a small fist pump. We had the discussion earlier, and actually with all the players agreed that those players are not allowed to do any strategic discussions with all their teammates. Does a fist pump count? The fist pump is within the rules. Okay. I will allow it. All right. Well, the door was open because Valesa was uh, yeah, yeah. getting a glass of water, taking a break, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I'm getting nervous here. I know. Taking 15k, by the way, on the channel. Welcome in, everyone. Welcome. If you enjoy, uh, if you're enjoying NAC4, we have two more days. Semi best of nine semifinals. <laughs> oh my god, bro. two best of nines tomorrow, and then a best of nine final is yeah. is crazy. And before that, a crazy show match: Team T90 against Team Nilly. While we see oh! Cologne. Flying in with $533, likely to be 500 euros. Remember, we have a private person that also said, if we get to 70k, I will make it 75k. I love the tournament here so much. The show match on Sunday, 4v4, played as a 1v1. T90's team against Nilly's team. Yeah. And the players were all played as one person, play basically the same civilization, the same color. Once we get to the next age, they will change. Therefore, for example, if I draft Leary, send him into Dark Age. The moment we get to Feudal Age, I can send in Hera, Yada, Yada. Should be lots of fun. We will have microphones for the players as well. And obviously, T99 will set up our teams. Cologne, thank you again for 500 euros supporting the tournament. Everything goes into the prize pool. Whew. 
Looks like they've started. We're going to be hopping into the game here, and it's going to be fortified clearing, and it's going to be Burmese against Aztecs. What a Civ matchup here. Now, Burmese has been a popular Civ pick on this map, especially against the Turks, because it feels like Aram Bai match up really well against Janissaries, mm -hmm. um, especially in equal numbers. So now we see them here for Valesa. How do they match up against the Aztecs? That's a good question, right? And it's simply not a matchup that we see so much. Burmese, we love to see the Arambai. Crazy damage output, not a great accuracy. Mm -hmm. They have to hit first. One of the most important things here is that monastery attacks 50% cheaper, plus we see all the relics, and yep. therefore you get a good idea on this map with nine relics on the field. Five on the inside, four on the outside. And if we go to Valesa's point of view, we can actually uh, get a good example of how those relics appear on the map. So there's no confusion. When you're sending your monks to the sides here, you know exactly where you're going. You know exactly where to send your scouts. Uh, both Viper and Valesa have never banned Fortified Clearing. That includes Valesa's quarterfinal or qualifier run. That doesn't surprise me at all. This is a map that suits his style. Yeah, he also picked a lot of Hippo Arena, relatively close those two maps in their play style. And also with all those relics, it's pretty nice to see where your opponent is because obviously minimum distance to those relics. And Viper, he's not walling at all, building some houses. Villisa, a bit more on the scared side here. Yeah, he's, he's starting walling. the wall early. And you can't wall to the edge of the map. This is the difference between like a Titans League fortified clearing and this fortified clearing. Mm -hmm. There is one strip of rocky terrain you can't wall to the edge of the map, so you have to go for these walls around the back of your base. And Valesa is walling far enough out there, he expects some pressure coming in towards his gold, even maybe range units. He's walling like four tiles away from that gold. That's goes for gates. Hmm, that's a bit surprising to me here as well. Goes for another house, wants to control the, all this area. Maybe it just feels okay. Mind games, if I play the long game, Burmese will perform pretty well if I get to a lot of a Rambai. The most likely scenario is that I die, is if Viper goes for some aggression on the outside. But Viper, no intent. So what's the advantage with the Aztecs here, Nilly? Well, obviously, the villagers carrying more is crazy, yep. right? Your economy gets so much better, especially farmers. And then we have all those monks becoming stronger every single time we are doing uh, upgrade in the monastery. Also, extra gold income if we get those relics in. And that could be pretty sweet. Those three relics counting as four. And Aztecs historically have been a really popular sieve on arena style maps. Now this is a bit of a divergence from the arena style maps because it has all that open space on the outside. So light cav are really a lot better here, mm -hmm. I think, because the eagles have less mobility than them. Also light cav only costing food, which is nice uh, when you're trying to snipe monks all over the place, considering that there are indeed nine relics here. So there's going to be a lot of monks involved. As Valesa already comes around with his scout, neither player going for a faster uptime, neither player going for that forward attempt as we've seen a couple times on this map. And it looks like they're both going to go directly into Castle Age. My only question here is for Viper. Like, how do you counter Lightcav if Valesa makes a mass of them? How do, you, how do you catch up to them? How do you keep your monks safe? You, you can't really, right? You can build some spearmen trying to protect them. You can also go for some eagles, right? You're already heavily on gold, so you try to probably play on the shorter distance area in the center, but you can't really have the great answer. Th your main answer simply is that those monks are surviving a, a bit more of the hits. You get the extra HP compared to other civilizations getting plus 15 HP. Your first upgrade, for example, already gives you plus 20. Yep. If you get Sanctity, it's uh, it's fantastic and might be just the Bengali approach. That's a nice sheep over there uh, from Valesa. Not something we see all the time from him. Well, yeah, okay. For a uh, Not super efficient. Two on gold here for him. He's placed this with two farmers. Pop 25 plus two. Seems like no light cap opening from him. Still doesn't have a barracks. Could be monks from both players. Four on gold. Hello, Mr. Viper. Yeah. If you go out for those monks uh, with the Aztecs, you want to do buddy system for sure. With the, they have higher HP, mm -hmm. but you want like a group of three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once you get eight, even if your opponent has four light cap, it's like he can't. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just, you got to stay away from that. So maybe Viper, maybe if it's a situation where Viper controls the relics in the center and then Valesa just tries to snag the ones on the outside. Oh, yeah. Kamigawa and Nimarin. Pizzeria there. Baba Caveri in Berlin. 
They're having a public viewing right now? Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice, I saw dude. some pictures there. They have a pizzeria and a bakery as well. And watching there. Also, they will provide pizzas for the meet and greet tomorrow. Yep. Very good Italian players. Yeah. Very, very good. Very Maybe strong. Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. Same group as Canada. <coughs> Not doing so well against us. <laughs> 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 Dave, proud of the ca his Canadian performance. <laughs> I'm the mascot, dude. Like, <laughs> I still get a ring. You know? like, <laughs> I still get a ring, bro. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, Castle Age on the way. Castle Age on the way for Viper. Valesse, uh, he was getting not having enough wood, right? You remember when I said, okay, he's not going to play market. That's because I thought he didn't. Uh, I didn't. I said he wouldn't play. Stable, because I thought he wouldn't have enough wood, and in the end, that's actually true, and therefore had to squeeze and loom something that you don't really need if you're fully walled. You think it's looking a bit shaky from Valesa ever since he got on the match point? You think uh, last game didn't look shaky? Mm. I think yeah, last true, game was true. was just very Other clean than the from both of them. Thing, the frustration there but that's, that's, that's a bit of unavoidable. Yeah, and yeah. I think what cost him the game was simply missing one single outpost, mm -hmm. and that's not really shaky. It's something that. It was a bit unfortunate also, right? He saw the army at the right-hand side, but only poking. I think if Viper attacks 30 seconds later there, Villasu makes a hold happen okay. as well. Okay, cool. Bit of a better uptime here for the Viper. Might go for some Eagles indeed in the queue. Now the big question, how many Monasteries are we going for? Viper with five on gold, not impossible to even add two. Villasu with four on gold, seems more like one to me. Viper has some really good scouting there on those relics. It's it's usually pretty hard to find those additional relics. Like, they'll run around the side, but I think he sees all three on the right. Okay. So well. that's, that's good information. He's just missing the one yeah. on the left, actually. Oh, that's really close. He, oh, he'll on probably loop back for that. Mm -hmm. Now Spearman and Eagle coming out. Scouts, obviously, aware of that. Did three scouts. Velissa could technically also add a bit of Spearman for some more damage against the other Spearman, but then the Eagles become more efficient. Okay, so Viper gets to the Castle Age. He goes for Boson, and I believe he adds a Monastery here. The second TC does not come up first. He still kept his stone. Um, so he doesn't want to go for an all-in approach, but he is going to open with the Monks first. Okay, Monastery not crazy though. Sometimes we see it a bit more aggressively trying to contest those relics in the center. Eagles now plus three attack, reaching Castle Age. Do we want to jump here if we have a listen? No. Waiting for Lightcap upgrade first. Eagle though does some damage against the scout. Yeah, that's a good first engagement there for Viper as Valesa waits for Lightcap. And Viper's got the Spearman mixed in with these Eagles. So even once Lightcap comes in, Valesa's got to be careful with that weak scout uh, to engage as Viper now gets. Double Monastery. Squires, and it's double Monastery from Valesa and a second TC. Viper also adding a second TC of his own. Next to the stone. Don't really expect him to go for the castle too early on. Obviously, Atel Atel could be a nice option there. More range and more damage for the elite skirmishes. Could be a good answer to the Rembi, but not to too much else that Valesa could go for. What do we think in late game compositions? I mean, this monk is likely gonna die no he started converge, converting at max range it might not he shifts onto the full hp takes out the weak one they come in and they do snipe the monk in time and they get away wow what an engagement there from Valesi. he took a risk yeah absolutely could have easily lost two light cav there viper already having another monk in the queue but is he housed again or what's happening there ah, he's upgrading first ah that would have obviously would have saved the monk a bit longer He's still controlling the relics in the center, though. Yep. Valesa has not had an opportunity to come out for that. And I go back to my original question. If this goes late game, ah, let's yeah. assume they both get, maybe Viper gets four relics, Valesa gets five. Like, what are the compositions we're going to see from these sieves? I don't really know. Honestly, it's a matchup that we so very rarely see. I oh. think, oh, that is nice. Honestly, something like Monk range units for the Viper, some skirms, some arbalest maybe, and try to do some pressure with those traps, trying to fight off the bombard cannons that Villisa could go for. It's also super interesting on this map because it's got the open areas on the side, so like suddenly raids on arena become a thing, yeah, right? yeah. which they never usually are. You're just funneled down the center, so maybe monks maybe not the best choice because you're so focused on them if the raids are coming in, but Valesa has not retargeted those monks, so he's still working well on these conversions, trying to block the eagles from coming in. Viper gets a little bit of revenge there, manages to snipe one monk. Will he get the second monk? He gets two eagles converted, but takes out three monks in total. 
Bias Viper, a bit of time, should have one Relic in there right now. And that trickles away quite nicely. He also added a second he's Monastery himself. I think he's sending Monks out to the Relics on the sides. Looks like he it. And he's getting fervor. Oh, right. No, 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 no. Oh, this misclick. looks like the TC bug from Viper. You know, he cycles through buildings so fast. It's not technically a bug, but sometimes he sets his waypoints to random places on the map. And that, that, that kind of looks like it to oh, me. Yeah. Oh, There's yeah. a third one on the way. Oh, that's really ugly for him. Conversions now happening potentially. Light cap there goes for the left hand side. Monk Eagles for the right hand side, and he might get both of them. He's going to get in the gate, and the relic does not. He gets two monks. The villagers are still coming forward from Viper one by one in a line. We'll see what he decides to do with those. Maybe it opens opens up an opportunity for him for some sort of forward base. He also does get that light cap, and you can really see the Aztec HP coming into play as he's healing up this monk from behind. Also looking to snipe a monk from Valesa over on this gets side. It gets through the gate here, Nilly. Big plays from Viper. Moves in further, and those villagers, they actually have Loom. Typically, you don't have Loom, but Villas are not too unhappy with this one. Yeah, and Loom by accident as the light cab gets converted back, and Viper still has villagers at the back, and Villas is targeting them. He's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be so nervous right now. Like, what is the plan from Viper? Is he going all in? We oh, don't it's know. More, it's more coming. Oh, you can still see more man. villagers there. Oh, oh no. This hurts so much. It could be a wrong waypoint of one of the TCs. Yeah, I the think it is. Working. I think it is. It's happened before. Tournament games, ladder games. You see it on his stream all the time. It does happen just I think it's just because he's so quick and he doesn't realize the villagers are back there just yet. He's full focused, as we can see him playing in the yellow here, full focused on trying to snipe these monks. He tries to get some more relics. That one could potentially go down, is going for this one, and you just see him flying over his keyboard. He just so quickly switched to the villager at the top. Yep. Oh, now you see some villagers. Yeah, oh, he yeah. saw them, but he didn't actually realize. Yeah, and it looks like the first couple of villagers died as they went up there. So he's seeing them, but he's not consciously recognizing the mm -hmm. fact that those are villagers. And how can we blame him? Like, we saw the amount of focus he was putting on to sniping monks. And now this villager is going to make her way back there. And Valesa is building houses with the villager he converted before. Also an opportunity to send another villager. Every single one of those is a two-vill swing. Yeah, so yeah. he's basically, if all three of them get converted, he's sending like six villagers <laughs> in favor of Valesa. It's just, oh, man. But he's Viper, slinging him. Viper got a lot of map control there in the center. A ton of map control as Atonement now comes in from Valesa. That's a big tech, but there's a lot of eagles here from Viper. Is Viper might... Oh, Valesa's wise. He doesn't open that gate. Mm -hmm. Love to see that one. Eagles get away. Relatively fortunate. Could have eaten one conversion. Now runs away. Not unlikely that Viper gets four relics, though, and this could be some conversions, but Atonement is in. Atonement is in, and Valesa will come forward. Viper will see that Atonement is in. He doesn't want to turn around with the Eagles because those monks are charging up against his own monks. He's getting handcart right now. That would have helped the villagers coming forward before. And the monk gets converted. It's going to convert another one. Viper needs to back up here. These monks will lack faith once they've converted the monks from Viper. But this is a frustrating moment for him as Atoma came in at the perfect timing for Valesca. And he gets the conversion against the monk with the relic as well. The pure chain reaction. Oh boy, one monk after the other. That monk is going to go down. Another monk is going to go down in the center there, but a conversion comes in on the eagle as Viper tries to convert the light cab. He is going to get one of those, and that will snipe another monk, but monks converting monks, eagles killing monks, light cab being converted, and then killing monks in turn. Valesa has full control over the middle of the map. Oh man, and Viper, you wanted that fourth relic, won't get it. And actually, if you don't have a Toman, but the op opponent has it, running away is not an option. You actually need to delete those monks at, as hard as it is. I will say, Viper Zico is looking a little bit better than Valesa's right now. He's got handcart in addition to the second wood upgrade, and he has the equal amount of villagers right now. And you can see the res collected in his favor. He also has four relics, Nilly. So I think he got the relics from the other side from the right side of the map. He got one from the left-hand side. At least the one is coming home here. I'm a bit surprised. It feels like 3v2 from the center. Some more are coming in. Not impossible that it's a 5-4 split in and the end. Eagles making their way to the back, and he's going to be able to snipe him up. I mean, just Viper things here as he shows up at the back of Valesa's base. Valesa there to defend. And Eagle Warrior now coming in. Those were just Eagle Scouts before. Um, all the light cav are back there, so Viper can feel pretty secure in the center, but Valesa now 
going for a slightly defensive castle of his own as he has enough gold to click up the imp, but his Fudico isn't quite there yet. Both players housed 99 out of 100. You can see how neck and neck it is. Only now wheelbarrow though, as you already mentioned, hand cart already in for the Viper. And now the moment for housed means the moment for Loom. Oh boy, he had to delete that eagle. He knew it was going to be converted, and now another eagle gets converted. He's going to lose all of these here, Nilly. He's going to lose all of these. That guy is not being converted, though, and now the monks have no faith. So it looks like Valesa is, in fact, going to lose his monks. No, he takes out that eagle at the last second, and Viper going for a castle of his own. This is so even. Look at the populations right now. Yeah, yeah. And the rush for him is now coming in and it feels like Willis should be there a bit earlier. Might be missing the second building, needed to wait Easy. for the He's castle so too. university in the back. Yeah, the eagles could be so annoying at the back there. Where the light cap are on the left side. The eagles are coming from the right side. There are TCs back there for Valesa, but he's going to have to allocate attention back here. And you remember, you can't fully wall to the edge of the map, so you can't fully secure this area if you are the fan. If we want to continue raiding here with all those eagles, would love to see the armor upgrade coming in and indeed Viper is thinking about that now, might find another villager kill here, tries to stay annoying and now this is the interesting <laughs> part of the game where we are thinking about army composition. Are we thinking champion v champion, like champion v jaguar warrior. <laughs> Villas is going for champions. Yeah. Wow. That's and then crazy. Jaguar Warriors should be a good answer to that. Yeah, and then what do you mix in against the Jags? You can mix in some Arambai behind that, potentially. Champion Arambai would be a sick combo, but then Viper can mix in some, well, skirms, monks of his own, like... It's more complex than rock, paper, scissors, for sure. Is. is there an option to just go Arbalest, though, for the Viper? I think so, especially if you get line of sight on those barracks, and he might if he keeps streaming eagles in here. And he might if he looks at Ooh. the Oh, the that upgrade. could be nice. And Willisie can't really wall around that one because we have the farms in the town center there. He's if he's not seeing it, could be some dead villagers. He's going to have to be quick. 20 seconds away from the second armor upgrade is Viper. Imperial Age, 40 seconds away for Willisie. Garrisons the villagers, but the castle is denied for now. Only a minute away to Imp is Viper as Viper now goes for a castle in the center. And he's going to be picking up more villagers. He's just causing distractions left and right. Also going for a petard somewhere nearly. Is he planning? on petarding into Valesa's base with eagles. It looks like it. Apparently raiding from two spots is not enough for him. He wants to go for the triple pronged attack. Obviously a lot of economy there in the center. Eagles would be ready oh, for it. Oh, those monks. Those monks are under the castle, but the eagles have plus two armor and the monks are looking very exposed at the moment. Viper doesn't want to take that engagement. One petard is not going to be enough to bust through these walls. He's going to need a second one, so he should have probably waited for two there, but he's pulling the monks out of position. The castle is now going up. And I think he might have an opportunity to snipe a few of those. Also, still raiding at the back of Alessa's economy, dividing his attention completely. Viper selling a lot of food here. That is surprising to me. We were just having a lot of wood, so not seeing... Oh, yeah, he's just dropping down and his amount of archery in the barracks. barracks. Though? Has he seen the barracks from Valesa? Because he, he was still queuing eagles there. He's That's going into archer ranges. That tells me that he's probably caught sight of that. It feels like it, right? Just drop five archer ranges there. Arbalest could be the next step. Elite skirmishers, also an option. Still control, controlling that at the left-hand side. And now the trap war begins. Trap war begins at the front. <laughs> this is a wild game. I've never seen Burmese and Aztecs in this situation <laughs> before. It's not a common Civ matchup that we get on a more open arena style like this. Maybe we've seen it on a closed map, but it's completely different when you have the opportunity to raid. I love the houses in front there from Valesa. He is creating himself a little nook that he can sit in with his monks and protect with the long swords. Viper, though, continues to go for the raid, and he made the decision to go for that third armor for his eagles first, even though he's not going to continue production. And he's going elite eagle right now. So maybe he's thinking, if he hard focuses at the front, I can raid him like crazy at the back. And also knows, okay, I have the castle, you have some monks. Low numbers of long swords won't be that crazy. That castle's going down from Valesa. It's four traps. How could he ever save it? It's four fills repairing. Like, it's simply not enough. And now Monk v Monk action again. Their raids are coming in. Viper with the slight population lead. And he raids at two different angles again. 
and Valesa just doesn't have the army. Like, it's a slow tech switch. He still needs even two-handed swordsman. He needs champion. He needs all of the upgrades for his infantry, and Viper is coming in here. Elite Eagle Warrior is in. The final armor upgrade is in. The castle looks like it's gonna die, and Viper is not under committing to the repairs of his own. He still has stone in the bank. Now he's targeting the trips, though. He's not targeting that castle, nearly. Quite, a vint, quite an interesting move, right? Feels like, okay, saving his own castle is more important. Open that area. Now the eagles are raiding the front. Uh oh this will be tricky for Villisa to put out all the fires that are coming. Eagles in the back, eagles in the middle, eagles in the front, and the castle finally goes down as Viper retargets away from those treads. The long swords are protecting the monks, but just for now, if Valesa brings them to the back of his base, those monks are dead meat as Viper continues to push forward here. Viper is still alive in NAC4, and it looks like he's bringing himself in a position to go to a game seven. Valesa calls GG, two wins in a row for Viper. We are tied 3-3 going into our second game seven of the day. Holy guacamole. Game seven here, looking for the spot in the semi-finals. Liri is waiting for them. People are Look happy with those sets over well. there, yeah. Nice, yeah, no one wants to miss this. Yep, we got our players remaining here and we've got some spectators as well and everyone's fully engaged with that game. I hope you are at home. Game seven, Viper versus Valesa. Can Viper overcome his demons? Can Valesa prove that it is not a fluke? and that he is the better player today. This is wild. The winner of this will go through to play Leary, by the way, so it doesn't <laughs> get easier. In the best of nine, yeah. who has <laughs> two days of rest to analyze yeah. those players, to think about all the civilization matchups that he wants to play for. Beat Flies him with $1,000. Happy to see game seven happen. Let's go. And we're $1,000 closer to that $70,000 mark. And once we get there, we get an additional five grand added to our prize pool. So. Keep working towards that. Thank you so much. We're so glad you're enjoying the show. We are loving it here. This is a very hype moment. I hope both of our players can bring it for this final game, which is going to be outcrop. It looks like it's going to be Tatars for Viper and Valesa. Well, Berbers. Or Magios. It's a pretty good option, right? But Berbers feels very natural, right? But Tatars often going for CA. Great against CA. Uh, those camera archers if we get to them. If then Viper feels like, okay, I want to add some Kashyyyk in there. The lesser already having the answer as well. Can go for cheaper camels. Feels very, very solid. Tatars, maybe slight advantage when it comes to the economy, but if it com comes to pure unit v unit, Berber should have the advantage. Man. That's I, I didn't think we'd be in a game seven position after Viper went down. I, 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 saw, I, I saw you how you sat in this chair. Or was it sitting? It was laying. It was leaning. broken. <laughs> you you were you were a, a broken, broken man. man. You no. were a broken man after no. game four. No, you're you're his teammate, man. I'm the, I want both of these guys to win, as cliche as that sounds. Mm -hmm. I'm really good uh, really good terms with both of them and uh, it's hard to see a competitor grow out, but unfortunately we will see one of these guys fall as Valesa has indeed gone for the Berbers and I'm super happy that Viper didn't try and do something really cute here with the Dravidians and has gone for the Tatars, right? If you hit that timing mm -hmm. with the Tatars, it can be super, super strong. As we see, uh, they have the silk armor for their cav archers, which can be super devastating, but unfortunately the Berbers do have a counter unit in the camel archer. The biggest thing though on this map, as Lord Doubt comes in for my underlings with a thousand and one dollars. <laughs> one up in me, Don, that's huge. Thank uh -oh. you so much, Lord Doubt, for the generosity. Um, the big thing on this map is that they get the 50% food from the herdables, and there's like eight herdables on either mm -hmm. side, right? And also they get thumb ring for free. 69k, by the way. And $100 flying in from Vivi in production. <laughs> Happy with that, apparently. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've been a movie maker for like the last two days, <laughs> getting that one ready. <laughs> it's a kid exploring paint the first day. <laughs> Look now, I know how to use the brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy. This is, uh, this is an important matchup for both of these guys. We talk about the consistency from Valesa. Can he bring it here? We talk about Viper being the greatest Age of Empires 2 player of all time. Can he show his dominance in this game seven? And he, if he wants to do it, I think he's gonna have to stick to the script that we've been talking about. Play standard, play meta, mm -hmm. try and capitalize on the early thumb ring in early Castle Age, try and take map control and carry it forward from there. Something like crossbow. 
could be a good option, right? Archer, Aggression, Willise, he doesn't really want to go for mass scouts, mass skirmishers, not really the units that scale and what he wants to go for. He wants to go for camels or knights. Still two cows missing, but that's quite a bit of food. A cow worth 225 food for Tatar. That is wild indeed. How many does he have under his TCs? I wonder, as Valesa gets the first hit, and that's a good opening for him. Okay, he's got some sheep under there. He's sending... Okay, there's two cows. There's four cows. Mm -hmm. And that should foot. carry him through here as he opens up with the barracks. Do you go for scale opening here because you have so much food available to you? I think so as well. Look at that. He also only sends six on wood, or maybe now it will be seven, because he doesn't need those farms for ages. Mm -hmm. He is sending one villager to gold, however. And uh, he is... A minute and 30 seconds away from Feudal Age, so it looks like it's going to be a Men at Arms opening here from Viper. Interesting. Did not see that one coming. Only one on gold. Is this maybe something to prevent the wall up, though? Potentially. Is this two militia? No, actually goes three on gold. Wow, Men at Arms opening. Yep. Something I did not see coming. But obviously scales better into those archers that want to be crossbows later on. Especially if you're matching up against a style like Valesa's, where he's more partial to go for that early wall. Mm -hmm. and be very conservative in his defense. Um, so we'll see what... W let's see what Viper has scouted in, in terms of Valesa's base. Um, he had his scout there for it, and he didn't see anything. He was chased away early. So he doesn't know exactly where the open parts of Alessa's walls could be. You know where the base is, because you just have to follow the green terrain. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't know where the openings might be. Now, Valesa has seen that barracks early, and with this timing... He doesn't know the gold. <sighs> he doesn't know about yeah, Mendoms. With this timing, it could theoretically be... There we go. He could theoretically be in archer range. It's three on gold. It could be. Yeah, exactly. yeah it could. Yeah. It's, it's a big mix-up, right? Like, And he didn't see the militia coming forward. He didn't see any flags on the barracks. Yeah. See how he responds to it. Now the archer range there as the follow-up tries to quick wall this. One spearman for the defense. Viper also cures up a spearman behind this. I don't think Villisa will get his walls up in time. Tries to make it happen somehow, but Scout blocks nicely. Oh man, Viper is going to be so annoying with this unit too. And the house doesn't have that much armor. And look at Viper blocking that wall off. Valesa, though, right on top of it. He is going to work away. And Viper is forced to loop around to the north there. Does Valesa know? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Look at that. He thinks he's fine. Now clicks he's on the outside. Out, he sees the too late. Run. You saw him building a tower there for a small second. Full panic mode. Spearman loses HP as well. Fortunately for him, he is Berber, so his villagers do move a little bit faster. But he's still going to have to abandon that area. The Spearman is being attacked by a bear. And Valesa is under pressure. He definitely didn't d expect this, just like we didn't expect the one-upping of donations. Beat on with another thousand and two dollars here. <laughs> Trumping Lord Doubt, oh my goodness. A crazy amount of support from everyone involved. Oh, Viewers quick wall, quick wall possible. Those could be could trapped. Gate. He could gate this. He's not going for it. Oh my god, that was so close. Viper knows too. Viper's heart was probably pounding as he found those mm -hmm. men at arms back there. Holy, thank you so much for your support, everyone. Could be... Still those men at arms trying to find something. Where are the spearmen of the Viper? Oh, one is at the top. Tries to combine armies, but how can you get that? That Spearman is isolated. Yeah, and Valesa is forced to keep all of his scouts at home against these men at arms. Viper is building up archers behind this. He gets the first hits in this engagement. Valesa will still be in a good position to clear up these men at arms, but it's going to cost him a lot of scout HP as Viper is only able to take out one of those. Two of those scouts, though, are very, very weak, so they won't find too much value going forward. Viper, he should not take any damage here, right? He should be walled. Archers at home. Skirms at home as well. Gets fletching now. Easy kill there. Is a bit early with the move out here. Well, he has a spearman to support him, right? So okay. he's got four archers and a spearman. You know how weak the scouts are. You know it's probably not uh, an archer range there from Valesa because you've seen his entire economy. I think it's like how are you going to take damage from that army that oh. Valesa has? Yeah, it's low HP scouts as well, right? And yeah. he stopped producing as well. Yeah, in my world, I thought, okay, he cleared this one up. Five scouts could be coming over there and could be a bit annoying, but not really happening. Liquid egg product. That sounds like an intriguing product there. Thank you again for your generosity, everyone. Uh, this game seven is so tense. Like, we've already settled down here. It was a good, it was a good men at arms push there from Viper. Obviously, Valesa clearing that up without losing a villager. 
And now we've reached the point in the game where both players are walled. We have to start thinking about early Castle Age, what we're going to make. And that tree is really low. Does Viper see that? Does Viper see that? Does Viper see that? Does Viper see how low that tree is? You even back up here. I think you might think about backing up. He's waiting for the timings. The tree! The tree! The no. tree! It's gone in the hole into the base. Oh, and Celeste can't get the wall! Pure disaster here for Villas. He's trying to run away, but that's horrible for him. That could be two, three dead. But he just tries to wall behind it, but that shouldn't be a lot of HP. And he does lose villagers. He could have lost more. That was a great wall from him. It was a good reaction. But once again, there's no the property wall behind is it. Struggling for the lack of a tree as Blessa tries to stretch out for that gold. He can't find any value with his scouts. And Viper is sitting on this wood line, and there's nothing behind that palisade wall, as you pointed out before. Oh, those archers are still in. With skirmish and numbers non existent. Blessa tries to make Castle Edge happen behind this. He tries to go to Castle H. He's got five villagers in the queue. Maybe he could unqueue those if he gets enough gold to click up. Things are getting super messy in the Berber economy, though. And the scouts, you can tell how messy it is because the scouts are just idle right now. And low, His low whole HP, focus is here. Low HP's villagers going forward as well. Is this the start of the Viper Redemption Tour, Dave? It might be. It might be the revenge arc that we were talking about. Viper looping around the front side of Valesa's base. He's not able to cut off the gold at the back. And Valesa is indeed on the way to Castle Age. But we'll look at the resources from the Viper. They're looking good behind this. Valesa has saved quite a few villagers due to the extra speed from Berbers. I don't know if he's going to keep it up, though, as Viper is trying to take on another one. Oh, TC was aiming at the Spearman. Actually, collateral damage there. Arch and the back took some HP away. And the economy will be pretty shaky for Villesa. He has one single cow left, and then how do I be transitioning into more food? What do you do here? You're even like, market. he goes, oh, oh, that's a beautiful market, man. That That is a beautiful market. You don't want those archers back in your wood line again. It's so tough to wall. Behind that Viper massing up another force, he's on the way to Castle Edge. What do you do here if you're Valesa? Do you, go, do, do you go for like uh, a siege workshop first? Do you just mass up knights? Like, looks like he's going for another stable, deletes it. Things better of it. Maybe he feels okay. I just need to clear up this army. Likely, am I behind in villagers? He can't get a sneaky village out. Viper, is he trying to poke here? Is he trying to debate? He could also just wait for a crossbow upgrade, right? Mm -hmm. Crossbow, Bodkin, I think you ranged that gold. You definitely ranged the farms, and ranging the farms would be super annoying here. Blessa needs all the food he can get. You can see only eight on food. He's seeding some more farms, but it's dangerous when an army is just sitting there. He doesn't want to make any units until he gets to Castle Age and gets that spike, but Viper is coming forward with another army. I do like this from Valesa. He's got the scouts in the middle, but you can see he's completely <sighs> distracted right now. Just the, the threat is just so immense there. Ay, 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 the archer's now going back, reaches Castle Age, so Bloodline's coming in, therefore no double stable production when it comes to those knights. Viper, perfectly comfortable in his position in the eco. The knights are coming out now. Once he gets to Castle Age, he will get Thumbring. I don't think he'll have enough time with that starting army to get the crossbow and bodkin arrow upgrades in, but he has another army patrolling in the center. There's crossbow, there's bodkin. Where are the knights from Valesa? No, still not the greatest numbers. Okay, it tries to jump there. Maybe armies Ooh. get together. He'll advantage there for those archers. That he thing. can't let these armies meet up. He cannot let these armies meet up. And the Spearman is in front. The Spearman's still getting value nearly. And he can't kill the army just yet. That is horrible for Valesa. He needs this headache to go away. Oh, but how? He decides, okay, it's time for a siege workshop. Probably will try to leave with those knights and maybe hope to find some damage against this. Spearman now helping out as well. But the gold is exposed. I don't think he can go for the counterattack. And Viper is feeling it right now. He's got army forward on Valesi. He's adding in that second TC behind. He's only got five on food, and I think he's hit the point where he's run out of cows at his own base. But right now, he's fully focused on the base from Valesa as Valesa has his knights looping out to the right side. He's going to try and do counter damage. He can't defend against the army. He will abandon it, and he taps out Viper three games in a row. <laughs> Viper makes it into the semifinals. Lots of people would have counted him out here, but he just played the standard games and delivered. And I feel, I feel for Valesa. Like he, he gave it his all today. Obviously, we get into that final game and the nerves start coming into play, right? As we see Viper celebrating in the main room. Valesa, he put a, he gave us a show.
Uh, but Viper was able, able to overcome all sorts of adversity, and he's got more to come with a matchup against Leary. Whew. That's going to be the second match of tomorrow. Obviously, we are starting off with Mr. Yo against Terra tomorrow at 13 UTC, and then directly following Leary against the Viper, giving him some rest here as well. Those were rough 48, 72 hours here for the Viper, and yep. he looks relieved. Yep. I don't, I don't know if he even believed in himself coming in here, especially if you were to ask him after he was down 3-1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Viper dropped something. I don't know. Oh, and he That's got to be a good oh. feeling, man. I got to sit up. I was like, I was kind of getting a little I bit stressed for both players I there. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a terrible feeling, obviously, for Valesa to go up 3-1 and mm -hmm. then drop three games in a row. But on the other side of the coin, it's a wonderful feeling. It has to be for Viper. And, and during that game, yeah. we obviously <laughs> <laughs> live, <laughs> live replay. <laughs> hey, at least you didn't drop the set, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's. I think we will oh just go over man. there and ask the man himself. Yeah. Uh, because like we, we are emotional, and he has to be even more. And yeah, let's just send us over. Uh. La yeah, and I'd, there's one of the microphones, Dave. Ooh, the screen got really shiny for a small second there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, six, 62,000 indeed uh, at the start, but someone donated, said, I will donate $5,000 once we break 70, and people went wild. So we are now at $76,000 there in donations already, 26,000 from the community, and we still have two days left to go, and especially you. Would love to have still two days left to go. How did you go into today? Um, in the last few days, I've been mostly about maintaining pain, <laughs> to be fair, to be honest. But uh, or like controlling the pain, so it's not too bad. Uh, I felt decent yesterday, and I feel pretty good today. Uh, I still notice it, obviously, but <coughs> I was able to play a pretty good game. And uh, yeah, Velesto. I mean, Velest. I was like, when I was down three-one, I was like, this guy just has my number, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, no, I felt good going into it, and uh, I was yeah aiming to play some good Age of Empires. It was it was it was sick. Like we we were scared for you at the three one. Yeah. Uh, like, did you switch anything between game four and five? Uh, I felt like I was a bit outdrafted on the first two maps in particular, so uh, I wasn't too bothered by those losses because okay. um, I still felt like I was playing pretty solid, like execution wise. So I wasn't too bothered, but when I lost uh, the Spanish game, I was like, okay, well, now this is going to be really hard. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, all I can do is take one game at a time, right? Did you try and change your approach against Valesa? Because I know you, you mentioned it, like you struggled the last set, you've struggled historically against him. Was there anything different coming into this set? No, I just um, try to do a good draft, because I think Valesa is amazing at drafting in particular. Um, and but he, he also picks like similar home maps to me, so it's like we're very stylistically the same. So I think if um, if one has a far better draft, it's like probably going to tip heavily in his favor. Uh, for me, it was just about drafting what I think is good and play what I think is good. Yeah, and maybe we can go into some highlights and talk a bit about stuff a bit more in detail, especially game one on Frigid Lake. We felt Japanese against Khmer. You already got quite a lot of criticism for your Japanese picks. How did you like this one this time? Uh, obviously, got completely. I mean, I, I did scout almost everything, so <laughs> I pretty much knew. Uh, like in back of my head, I should have known that this strategy was something I could go for, because uh, I've, I've played the same thing myself pretty much with Kumar. So it's like the fact that I didn't even check or wall up, or like I should have just dropped, rushed the tower as soon as I saw like three archers just to deny all the damage that came in. Uh, but I also when I resigned, I was like, I'm probably dead, but I was surprised that he wasn't further ahead economically. Uh, but I can see here his resources anyway. He was getting ready to go with Age, So I don't think Japanese are a bad pick, but I think like going in arms against Kumar was probably not the smartest idea. We uh, also didn't feel like it was a bad pick. It was just very surprising to us that it was your fourth pick. Yeah, the order. Yeah, well, he he took Kumar. We had, we had banned. Uh, we didn't pick Persians, actually, but... Uh, I just felt like I, wanna, I wanted to try something with Japanese. Unfortunately, it was into Khmer, which probably wasn't the best. 
-hmm. So game two here was kind of a stalemate in the center for a very long time, right? Yeah. And then you got some great engagements with the camels. You obviously went double monastery with Mongols. What was the thought process behind that? Well, I figured he would just outmass me on camels and like, uh, I'm not really sure what I should have went there. I think again, it's just a real tough sim matchup. So it's like, um, I felt like I have to outmatch his camel numbers in the opening because I do have bloodlines so I could potentially hold with that. But I always felt like it was going to be super hard. I also didn't really know what army to go for. Uh, Skirms are blessed. Mangoda is probably unrealistic because it takes too long. Uh, lances don't really work. Uh, I felt like if I don't get eco damage early, then I think he's just in a great position. So I, I was trying to go for like a super early lame, etc. This fight right here, was this yeah. a conscious deci decision? Ugh, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say, decision <laughs> from you to take this fight or were you focused somewhere else? I was thinking I'm just gonna let them fight and hopefully they trade decent, but he had way more camels. It was obviously a bad decision. I should have just fallen back, but I don't think it would have changed anything based on how the game played out. Um, I think I just needed to play differently, maybe go with my arms or something and like try to make it a different game than what it ended up being. Again, I did go for an early lane because I thought if I could take a sheep, maybe even a boar, maybe I could make something happen. But uh, yeah, it was a real tough, he executed that perfectly. Yeah, really nice play there. Went for a lot of skirms and arbalest there in the end, not much you can do. And now you're down 2-0. What is your thought process here? You said the first two games didn't bother you too much. You mm -hmm. executed well. It was just bad civilizations. It, it's like because like I'm looking at the score and I'm getting scared, <laughs> but and you still have to play this game. Yeah. No, usually like the way my mindset works is that if I feel like I'm playing well, I'm fine. Because if I feel like I'm playing well, I think I can beat anyone as long as my execution is good. Mm -hmm. So I just go into the next game, try to play well, and that pathing was annoying. <laughs> oh yeah, that light cap. He blocked beautifully. He though. did. Yeah, yeah. he it did do good. like a pretty good job, but there yeah. were some instances there. Yeah. 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 And uh, Hans on graveyards. How inspired of doubt is that? Um, I don't. Not really much, but I know he likes. He it, he yeah. he will he will yeah. take credit yeah, for yeah, it anyways. Listen, the <laughs> doubt picks Hans here because he wants to use the unique tech. To deny <laughs> relic gold yeah. from the opponent. We, we talked a bit about it before. That's like 56 <laughs> minute unique tech uh, research. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted like um, last time we played this match, he was Lithuanian, so I was Franks. That felt like a hopeless matchup. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I just want a 50 50 type of civilization where I can try to just outplay. And I felt like in the end I was able to do that. Yeah, you got your stables running at all times. Economy was super smooth. You reached Castle Age, double extra town centers, both eco upgrades. You had to set up at the left hand side. Monk trades were going really well for you. That must have given you quite some confidence again. Yeah, uh, obviously it, it it was still a dicey situation. Like he, I wasn't fully walled. He was fully walled, so he could still run in and do eco damage now and then. So it wasn't that comfortable. What went wrong in this game for you? I think I managed my eco wrong. Like I don't think the plan is too bad. I just think um, I, I kept mining stone upon hitting castage. So even though I got three TC TCs, I couldn't really maintain production. So it was like, wh why have three TCs when you can't make three villagers from three TCs? So I think I mismanaged my economy a little bit. Um, if I did a little bit better of a better job there, also I gifted two Kongs to him through conversions. So I lost map control immediately. I, I didn't lose it, but like I didn't have the map control I was hoping for. Uh, and then from that, there was just like very solid follow-up by him. Is the supremacy timing here, is that planned or is that improvisation? Just want to keep those bills alive. <laughs> 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 it's just, I mean, you never, it's not, never a bad tech, right? Yeah. No matter what. And now 3-1 back against the wall and you are playing a pretty standard game in the sense that you're going crossbow knights again, early second and third town center, again, early eco upgrades there. And he was going for Skirm Camelot. Did you feel in full control here? Yeah, I felt from the start. Like I, from the first, my spear hit his scout the first time. That after that, I felt like in control. I knew as well that I probably would catch him a bit off guard with like a fast archer follow up. And uh, Chinese are so smooth to play here, so it felt really nice. I was very scared though that he would pick like Berbers or something else here, and just use Hindustanis. Uh, even on like uh, gold, gold rush? No, what's it called? Dry graveyards. I'm thinking if he uses him to there, I'm pretty screwed because I feel like Hans are a pretty bad match there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was really happy that he still spent his sieves the way he did because I think he could have taken some risks and thrown some bad sieves on certain maps in order to get a favorable sieve matchup elsewhere. Especially up with 3 1. Yeah, exactly. That's wha what I was worried about. Uh, but I'm happy he played him to here. 
Was it satisfying when you hit imp and immediately got every single technology in the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, with Chinese, as you know, yeah. I had such a great economy. Uh, obviously, it went like 200 pop before I hit imp. So floating some resources, and Chinese have cheaper resources, uh, cheaper upgrades as well. So yes, it is quite satisfying. <laughs> And this one was really dicey. Obviously, yeah. some villagers going to the top of the Bro, map you, again. You, you, you <laughs> slung him three villagers, which is like a six-bill uh, swing, right? I wanted to build outposts. Are you actually? That was intentional. No, no, no it okay. was not. Yeah, okay, it was okay. the waypoint. Yeah. Thing, right? yeah. This was a nice move by him. Here, I was like, hmm. Oh, you, you, this, I this think was like dominoes. Like yeah, every exactly. single one he converts, exactly. he just converts another. Yeah. I do regret not just committing with my eagles and just like, okay, if he gets two, three eagles, that's fine. Uh, I added like three, four barracks extra after like as this was going on, so I was ready to like just spam eagles and try to take it from there. Uh, eco is very close, I can see. So this was never really too easy to read. Well, you had an eco upgrade, right? You're just getting hand card. He didn't have mm -hmm. anything there. So that mm -hmm. was really nice for you resource-wise. As you can see, you also collected a solid 1,000 extra resources. If you think both players are getting into employer age with even economies, what should be the ideal army composition for Bermesia? Uh, you can never count out Aramba these days. They're super good. Um, but as I saw he was going champion, I was actually planning to go uh, Jaguar Warriors. But then I figured, okay, I'll just use Eagles to raid on the sides and switch into Arbalest in the middle. It felt like it should be smooth. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Jaguars, Elite Skirm, Atletal Skirms for Aztecs, with some Monks maybe. Mm -hmm. And the Burmese, probably champion around by Monks. I don't know. If you need it's to ask it's players, probably. It's really, it's really <laughs> hard to... Uh, but this map is like, you can raid on the sides as well, yeah. so I think some mobility doesn't hurt. Hussar would be nice as well for Burmese. And here, Tatars against Berbers, we felt like if it's army versus army with even economies, it could be better for Berbers. How did you try to not get into even economies here? Yeah, I didn't wanna want a situation where we were like dragging into a late game, because I feel like Camel Archers would just dominate. Like if you play Camel Archers, Camel. <laughs> 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 Even the fly wants to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> if he just plays Camel Archer or Camel, I think I would struggle to find the right composition. I don't think Tatars are like, uh, has no chance in the Imperial Age, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just wanted to like make it a bit messy. Maybe he was feeling a bit shaky because uh, he was up 3-1 and suddenly it's 3-3, so I wanted to like put on pressure and force him into an uncomfortable game. Um, yeah, it's kind of what happened. Obviously, quite lucky with the overchop just at that moment. Um, but yeah, I think the pressure was good and uh, yeah. I, I was quite relieved when he resigned. I obviously thought he would play on a little bit longer, but since he went with his knights to counterattack, which was a bit of a strange decision in my opinion, um, he was, his eco was so exposed. Yeah, so he actually didn't really c counterattack too far, right? He was a bit indecisive yeah, yeah. there, and then pushed away from the gold. Couldn't really get to the mangonels, and just expected that your economy would be so much better. Yeah, you're taking down four three, and we can take a look at the bracket together now. Obviously, Mr. Yo, also in a an incredible set earlier today, winning against Tedo there. He will face Hera at the opener tomorrow at 13 UTC. And it will be you against Leary. So far, you lost to Villese in the group stage 3-0. Now came back and won. How, how is your mental preparation going to be to face Leary, who you also lost to 3-0? Well, the aim is going to be to repeat what happened today, right? Uh, going down 3-1. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that manner, but like obviously I will try to try to win. Um, I mean, historically I've had a good take on Leary, but these settings are a bit different, obviously. So I think it's going to be super tough. But um, last time we... P <laughs> 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 don't, don't like by that. the way, the highlight of the yeah. set. <laughs> I was obviously not feeling 100% last time we played, so even though I did still play fairly decent, uh, mm -hmm. but if I can just increase my level a little bit, get decision making right, maybe draft mm -hmm. a bit better, I think uh, we're going to have really good games tomorrow. Hera, in one of the interviews, said that Leary and Hera didn't have to show any of their prepared strategies yet, and that's probably one of the scariest things I've heard all mm -hmm. week long. How are you trying to prepare against that? Well, I mean, it's not like we have shown everything ourselves, like the GL guys, but um, I don't think there's going to be too much secrets, too many secrets up their sleeve, right? Um, I feel like the maps are slowly getting figured out, but obviously I'm, I'm curious to see what they come up with. I mean, if you don't play anything throughout the whole tournament, sometimes it backfires because you try it like, oh, you have practiced something and then you try it in the tournament and it's, it actually doesn't work, right? 
So it's not that straightforward. But obviously, if they have like, I mean, I think they might actually be the two of the guys that have trained the most for the tournament. So if they have a lot of secret stuff or that they have prepared, it can be really maybe uh, Jordan really and ACCM top two. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but also, like Lear and Hera, they feel like they're playing all the time in the training area as well. So yeah. I think they're both grinding a lot. Uh, but yeah, it will, be, it will be interesting to see if they have anything uh, special. I'm done with my questions. Do you have any opinions on the general level of this tournament? Obviously, you've struggled in three of your sets. Um, outside issues notwithstanding, how do you think players are performing so well here? I think it's a really high level. Like I could tell even in the group stage when I played like Nico, for example. Yeah. I won three one, but I felt like he was playing at an extremely high level. Um, yeah, I, I think the level is as expected, right? Everyone are super good these days, and everyone keeps improving. So uh, the to get, to reach to the top spots is getting harder and harder uh, every single day. Well, congratulations, man! It was an incredible comeback, and uh, you've got. Revenge arc enemy number one <laughs> eliminated, and now number two, and then potentially even number three that swept you before in the group stage. So good luck, dude. Thank you.